Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 2, Episode 15. Today we're talking Draniac, exclamation point, from 2000, directed by Brett Piper. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. I'm Connor the Plumber McGraw. Welcome to the dumpster. I'm going to exorcise the demons. This house is haunted. Mister, the problem is in the pipes. The ghost is in the pipes. Give me a hand with this stuff, will you? Exorcisms can get nasty. <laughs> So, this was a movie. Uh, I love this movie. Oh, man. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> How did we know? It's damn good. I don't know if I did. <laughs> this is like, you know how we're always talking about, like, you know, shitty movies that are, like, made bad on purpose? Yeah. Yeah. Or made made poorly on purpose? See, I don't think this is one of them. No, I, I think this is a sincere a- attempt, but at the same time, it's not a sincere attempt that I feel like i respect all that much well this is one of those genuine pieces of cinema garbage that i love so much because they give a shit like i will say this though um if i had some built-in nostalgia for this it would have been way easier to absorb okay but without that i was like will you fuckers do something <laughs> Uh, sometimes it's aggressively boring, but I mean, that's just like a product of like low budget filmmaking and like filling out time. It's also a product of, of, of a, of a, a good thing to throw this movie's way towards the back third of it. So, oh, for sure. And I don't know. I mean, are you guys familiar with Brett Piper? Not really. Stuff like Shakorama is familiar to me. But beyond that, it's all surface level stuff. Okay, yeah, like so. They bite is a big is a big film for me from him, uh, and that was a ninety six. And I know he's got other. I he's got a whole litany of films that I just haven't seen. Uh, he's also has one that just came out this year called uh, Outpost Earth, which looks fucking bonkers. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I feel like I know what this is actually. Brett Piper's cool because he loves practical effects and like really won't op for shitty cg and i think that's a big selling point for me like he'll put all he'll just dump all whatever money that is like into like stop motion and like all creature effects and practical effects and they look really good most of the time yeah but stop motion isn't fucking cheap or easy so no um especially to do it well and there's a lot of good stop motion in this film and there's a lot of real i I saw the trailer for outpost earth and there's a lot of really good stop motion in that too and the compositing is 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 decent it's better than titanic 2 for sure well if you you know low bar there joe to be fair (laughs) not saying anything negative about this guy's movie the the, the difference between the two men there is uh sincerity because i'm sure this guy is was giving a sincere effort with what he had and shane van dyke was like who cares well you know brett piper probably didn't get handed a fucking five million dollar uh you know check as a teenager or whatever the fuck he got growing up i think the word we're looking for here is perspective yes yeah yeah because brad piper has a very good handle on that he knows exactly what he's doing here if i'm to be as sarcastic as possible uh a bunch of very unlikable morons gather into a really gross house and then eventually everyone takes acid and the movie just takes off into fucking outer space <laughs> At least, at least that's what it felt like. Um, because about like, those the, goddamn French fries, yeah. By the back third that rolls around, I'm like, this is like a different movie. Yeah. And then one of my uh, favorite inept characters rolls along, but we'll get to him. Oh, he's fucking wonderful. So a a girl named Julie and her dad, who's a drunken motherfucker. Um, oh yeah. Who's got a business in buying and selling houses that should be torn down or condemned? I guess. Question fucking mark, baby. <laughs> they get a job to clean up this house, and uh, there's a Drano monster that lives there. A water elemental. Uh, sh- sure. <laughs> That's what they call it. This thing is referred to as Dembala Mado or some shit. That's a fucking like voodoo serpent god thing. I think it's the same fucking god who who lets Chucky jump into different fucking bodies. I think that's the same god that bit Ray. It's possible. I've never played Samba de Amigo, okay? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's basically the plot. Um, and then barring some details that happen at the beginning and end. Uh, yeah, that's it. There's a drain monster. Sure is. And it, at times it looks like the pair of sentient lungs from Dead Alive that attack Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like a ghost slash demon slash... 
whatever the fuck it decides to be at any given time. I don't. I couldn't tell you what this thing looks like. <laughs> Oh no! It's like it's it's like the thing. It's like an amorphous what whatever. Com- it's completely formless. Which I guess yeah. if you live in drainage pipes, you wouldn't want to have a solid form. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I guess we finally found out what happened with Wilford Brimley at the end of that movie. He got <laughs> he, he made it out of there. <laughs> he fucking hid out inside a basement in drain pipes. He drainiac. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh. He sure did. It's okay, I'm a Drainiac now. He chose the form of their Destructor. So, but we don't open with any of those people who are important to the plot. We open with uh, George and Lenny, long retired from the days of, of Mice and Men. Lenny survived somehow. <laughs> <laughs> if Lenny moved to New York. Yeah, and they became uh, street rats. Yeah, and if he didn't get taken out back and get shot in the head. Hold on a second. The opening title card to this fucking movie <laughs> is Christmas Eve... A few years ago. Still not quite sure what the point of that is. I have no idea. Like, th- this has no relevance to the rest of the film whatsoever. It doesn't take place on Christmas Eve. Nobody's talking about Christmas. It's not even It's not even winter, for Christ's sake. I forgot about that entirely, unless I didn't even think about it. it I must have looked at that and said, huh, and then subconsciously buried it five minutes later. You know what? You, you mentioned it's not really winter at all. It just, you know, it gives me pains just thinking back to the most recent season of Game of Thrones, where it's like, <laughs> yeah, winter came and there's fucking flowers blooming. I guess it's more like Halloween or like fall-ish. Yeah. But Christmas Eve, apparently, according to the title. No, well, well, it's Christmas Eve in the in the, in the beginning of this film. Anyway, yeah, it, it, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the prologue of this film is Christmas Eve, and we are told that for whatever fucking stupid reason. So, um, these two guys, did they just survive like the whole um, uh, the uh, not the stuff uh, street trash like massacre or something? Like, did they just narrowly escape? Yeah, but they don't they, they don't fucking uh, escape it very very for very long. No, they got away from the deadly. Vi- oh, what was it? What the fuck was the the alcohol name? Viper. Ten of Fly Viper, baby. There you go. Yeah, they got away from that only to be, you know, end up here uh, in, in, in a somehow worse situation. They fuck with the whiz, man, and that's what happens. Anyway, um, yeah, we're, we introduced these two just, I don't know, these weird bozos were hanging around in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be homeless. Yeah, they're homeless, but they're just camped out in the middle of the woods, um, and I don't, they're just, I don't know, just bullshitting. Um, and it's seemingly locationless. I have no idea where this is. Yeah, it's just random nowhere in the in the woods, man. When you look around, and that's why they call it the woods because there's wood. Dark forest is happening. <laughs> uh, so so yeah, they're sitting around this fucking fire, and they're like in this this the fucking. I don't, I'm just gonna call him Brooklyn because he's like yeah, I fucking and my fucking old lady like threw me out or whatever's and I'm fucking I'm homeless and you're homeless and I don't know even know how I met you or how we ended up in the middle of nowhere's. Is- this guy's like, I couldn't find anything for the fire because everything was fucking green and nothing would burn. And he's like, where the fuck did you learn that? The fucking uh, Ranger Scout handbooks? And then Fishman, like, pops out from behind a tree. Starts crying. He's like, don't bring it up. Yeah. Meanwhile, Fishman comes out from around a fucking corner and was like, if you're if there's green around, find a pine cone. What is, uh, what is this, a fucking <laughs> Boy Scout ad? <laughs> no, that's a beehive. Fishman's like, looks at the camera. He's like, only you can prevent blah, 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 blah. Disappears into the background like Slender Man. <laughs> Only you can prevent belp. Only, only you can prevent homelessness. <laughs> I guess. So at one point, this this Brooklyn guy, he's fucking going off, uh, and he's saying, "Ah, oh, yeah, you know, fuck this country." And this other homeless guy is just like, "Hey, don't talk shit about America." And I'm just like, why do you give a fuck, buddy? You're homeless. They're not helping you out. No. Also, the dialogue feels like two men just on the cusp of insanity and their nerves are just firing off whatever the fuck, will, you know. Oh, yeah. Whatever, whatever synapses are happening first, they're just, they're just kind of going from very strange mini conversations. They're like borderline fucking star- on starvation, man. They're like yeah, fucking... Yeah, they're just like, oh, oh, just, just babbling to themselves. They're having hallucinations and shit. And then at some point, uh, don't they get into an argument over booze because one of them's got one tucked in his, uh, <laughs> his fucking jacket? Yeah, dude, dude is like, oh man, I could really go for a drink. And the other guy's like, yeah, me too. And he's like, his back is turning. He's got like a giant... Bot- He's got like a 750 milliliter bottle of fucking, I don't even know what, gin or some shit. Well, it's like the, the Brooklyn's like, hey, you got a bottle of liquor in your pocket? Are you just happy to see me? <laughs> and he's like, no, this, is, this isn't my bottle of creme de menthe. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not drinking anything. It's a nice pop. Leave me alone. So they start fighting over this fucking bottle, and somehow it flies out of one of their hands and hits the fire and just creates like a fucking explosion just about. Uh, well, here's the thing, like... They throw it, it like gets thrown in the fire and explodes for like a half a second, and it like and it, this the fire like flares up for a second, but then 
they start freaking, like, Brooklyn starts freaking out. He's like, oh, my God, put out the fire. Put out the fire that we already started. Yeah, but, like, it's not any bigger than it was. It just, like, flared up for a second. So the other dude takes, like, a giant log and fucking just smashes it and puts it out. And the guy's like, <laughs> why the fuck did you put out the fires? And he's like, you told me to. Ugh. Um, And then they see Spencer Mansion. Our clay mountains in the fucking distance. It's been, it's been substantially downsized. I mean, I got a different theory on that, if I'm going to be honest with you, Connor. Are you saying it's the House of the Dead? No. You know, I have a, you know, they, they walk up to this fucking house and it strikes me. This is the house at the end of Mosquito, <laughs> but it's like reformed because it's, oh it's fucking haunted. It could do whatever it wants. It's true, man. It just rebuilds itself is what happens. Isaac Hayes is down the fucking street climbing out of a refrigerator and this thing's reformed <laughs> as these guys approach it. He's like, I'll be damned. They see this Spencer ass mansion, like Adam's family house mansion. Like it's, you can picture it. It's not even a mansion. It's like, the, it looks like the fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just a just a big house, big house, and they, they go in, and, and you know they go right in the ba- they go right in the basement, and it's flooded. The fucking wet bandits have been there. Oh I yeah, mean, we talked about it on Mosquito. Go listen back to the episode, season one. Harry and Marv are fucking sucked dry in the corner. Yeah, they're, they they step right over their corpses. Hendrix is in the dolly, crashed into the ground. Uh, Gunnar Henson's body parts are, are they're nowhere to be found. We don't know if he's alive, dead, or whatever. Well, he may be alive, maybe. Maybe. We don't know if John Hurt came and collected him. It's possible. See, now we're getting into some fucking Marverse territory here because this is cro- <laughs> See, this is where it splinters and it's like, okay, now we have the now now we have, you know, the, the wet bandits are in that house. The mosquitoes have been eradicated and the house has been rebuilt, but their corpses have been preserved? Yeah. I propose a doing theory. And Sean, you play Dark Souls. You'll get me on this. What if time in some spots in this universe is so convoluted the past, present, and future all exist at the same time? Oh, I fully believe that. <laughs> the Wet Bandits are both there and not there, and both dead and alive at the same time. Well, and you know, honestly, I feel like this is how French Stewart uh, got both of their DNA <laughs> uh, so that he could, you know, create a clone and, uh, you know, that's what we ended up getting uh, Marvel Lime in uh, Home Alone 4. <laughs> uh, if you recall, he had the uh, the hairy, uh, you know, fucking aberration, let's call it, growing out of his <laughs> chest. Um, so, it's, you know, that's my, my, my running theory. And, you know, again, let's check the math with Dr. Buchanan. It, it sounds right to me. You couldn't figure that shit out if you tried. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Like, if you looked at, if you looked at the equation on a chalkboard, it's just constantly changing. <laughs> It's just scribbly lines. It's just constantly moving. Yeah, it's, it's being drawn and erased and redrawn every time you look at it. Is John Hurt Chronica? Yeah, you know, he could be. He's rewriting time. Maybe he just likes high heels on the weekends. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to shave my head bald and wear a dress. I'm going to be gender fluid. I have a literal hourglass in the middle of the universe. It's where the, re- the restaurant at the end of the universe is right there. Zaphat Bebel Brooks is fucking in there just like, who the, who the fuck invited him? Who, uh, J- uh, John Hurt, there goes the neighborhood. There it is. Who's his team? He's got, like, a team of, like, bad guys. Meshock Taylor's there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and John Hughes. And he's like, later we're gonna fuse together. Arthur Dent's just trying to get home. <laughs> Randy Van Dam is off in the corner. He's like, everyone take off your clothes. <laughs> I'll get him. <laughs> it's like the one place in the universe that Granny Van Dam feels at home. <laughs> well, she's the gatekeeper, man. They all just walk around naked to appease her. Like <laughs> she's, she's like, yeah. She kept saying, yes! "Take our clothes off." <laughs> they actually get it now. Take all in. everybody. Take it off. Whoa. I mean, Granny Van Dam's wet dream is a fucking nudist colony in wheelchairs. So these guys go over to this pipe that's like dripping this green slime. It's dripping boogers, all right. It's just it's it's dripping Nickelodeon slime. And uh, the one you know, Brooklyn fucking puts his hand up and like touches it, and he he says something like, "He's like, ew, what the fuck is this shit?" And he's like, and the other guy's like, "I don't know. Why didn't you lick it and find out?" And Brooklyn's like. What does he say? I resent that comment? Something like that. Something like that. Something really stupid. And I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? We we really got some fucking morons breaking into this house to find someplace, you know, warm to sleep. You know, they, they go in the basement and start fucking with the pipes. What kind of moron just breaks into a house and starts fucking with the pipes in the basement? Why wouldn't you just break in and go upstairs? That's what I was saying. Why would you break in and go right to the basement? Um, I feel like they could have just walked through the front door of this place because it's falling apart. <laughs> And they fall right to the floor, into the basement, both paths. <laughs> they could have walked down the street another mile and just took a fucking nap at the White Castle. They're open 24 hours a day. They get hit with a fucking tool chest. It falls through the fucking hole. They grab the fucking door and they get electrocuted. So they, yeah, one of, I can't remember which one, the one without the beard, grabs this, uh, the, okay, this, we go from zero to 100 real fucking fast. He touches this thing, and doesn't it zoom in? 
like real quick onto like the little bit of like boogery goo he has in his finger and it has it has like a face and teeth yeah for like a split <laughs> second this is where the cool effects jack up because he's got like this you know there's a lot of like reverse photography in this which i really like with yeah. and they do a lot of, with like the liquid stuff um and like all this green goo shit is like s- sucking up through like his hand or like spilling out over his hand and he like jumps on his friend and he's like help me and he looks like the guy from fucking robocop like half of his fucking Blah. face is all melted and gross <laughs> i fucking love that shit except nobody hits him with a fucking car afterwards but he does fucking become a big blob of shit oh man this is the fastest acting demon i've ever seen so uh other guy kicks brooklyn off him and he falls down and like melts into shit he, he has been skeletonized he is <laughs> he's completely dead yeah just leaves a skeleton um he's a sewage covered skeleton um and uh yeah you get a couple cool shots of him kind of dissolving um there's a lot of those uh and then after he completely melts the uh the booger monster then exits through his sleeve and then we get the longest credit sequence I've ever had to sit through. It's really long. C- compared to some other scenes that we'll get to, this isn't that long? No. But it does just mosey on about. Um, and it's, I was... It meanders a lot. I Yes, I was getting blob vibes uh, from the, the opening credits. Um, I want to make take a minute to point out the cast, because the star of this movie, uh, Georgia Hats, Hats, Hatziz... Hadziz? Is one of the only people in this movie who would really kind of go out and do something, I guess you'd say noteworthy. One of them was in Transformers, Transmorphers, I'm sorry. Oh, she's working with Shane, Shane Van Dyke. Yeah, and if you, do, if you do an image Google search for, uh, Google image search for Draniac, you get naked pictures of Tom Jane. <laughs> uh, and I wondered why that was for a few minutes, and then I realized that this woman went on to be in Hung with Tom Jane for HBO. Um, it's weird that that's how that connects. That she's the one in Transmorphers? I thought it was the friend. No, 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 it's the friend. Georgia Hatsis is Julie. She's the one who goes on to be, uh, to be in uh, Hung with Tom Jane. Okay, okay, gotcha. The other one is in Transmorphers. I feel significantly worse for her. So yeah, so then we're introduced to our main character, Julie, and she just gets home, uh, and she walks in, and I guess she's late or something, because her dad's like, her fucking piece of shit dad's like, hey. <laughs> Her, her piece of shit dad being played by a lesser William Sadler. Oh my god. Don't you fucking soil Sadler's name with that fucking piece of shit. Oh, I, lo- I love William Sadler, but this dude looks just like him. I swear to god, he looked like, you know, I, I, two people came to mind. Mo Howard in the later years. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Tennessee Luke, who is, uh, he's in a shit ton of Tim and Eric stuff. He's kind of the guy who talks like this. But he's got he's got blonde hair. Uh, if you know who I'm talking about, it's just it's it's pretty much a one to one. Yeah, Dad's a piece of shit who deserves to have seven heart attacks. Unlike the mandated Vince McMahon five, he's just just arbitrarily nasty to this girl all the time throughout his time on screen. I guess he's a vicious drunk, and you're not really given a reason as to why he's such an asshole. He just is. No, not at all. I guess because his wife died, but his no. daughter seems the only one actually broken up. Yeah, about but it. his wife died because I, I let's honestly just spill the beans now. It'll be easier for later. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Because like there's a scene that comes up yeah. where you, yeah, Joey's mom killed herself because dad's a vicious asshole. So like this. Yeah. This cycle just continues. Like he's a vicious asshole and made his wife drove his wife to suicide, but that doesn't explain why he's a vicious asshole. <laughs> Um, he's just very, like I said, arbitrarily nasty to this poor girl, who seems old enough to be like, fuck off, dad, and just leave. Well, she's 17, Connor. She's not 18 yet, so... Uh, until uh, then, until then, he, he, you're my problem, and I feed you and clothe you, and you work for me. Yeah, but like, I don't know, a flight of stairs could solve this problem real fast. Well, see ya, creepazoid. What happened? Tripped on some shoelaces. I don't know what happened. The Titanic hit us. The Titanic hit your house. Yes. Sure did. Ran, came right through the living room. Uh, so she goes upstairs to, like, go to sleep, and I guess, like, Tetsuo's fucking TV is on? <laughs> because it's just, like, bash, 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 bash. there's just, like, this white noise shit going on. Mushy, mushy. Mushy, mushy. Mm, mushy, mushy. Yeah, we, this movie kind of goes, uh, it's, you're, you spend a few minutes with some ki- with Julie and her dad, and then the movie's like, hey, you want some drugs? <laughs> yeah, because, like, well, first of all, there's, like, a five-minute fucking montage of her taking her clothes off. Good lord. And then, like, she gets into, yeah. she gets into bed? Again, like, it's just, like, this weird, it's, like, lit really strangely, and there's, like, a TV going that's seemingly not even anything and then she has like this crazy fucking dream that lasts for five minutes which is kind of cool yeah she gets attacked by fucking swamp thing it tries to get her from (laughs) under the bed it goes all uh night trap on her ray wise is down there trying to cop a feel there's like a bug monster thing yeah that like like, sticks a fucking 
thing in her neck and like sucks her blood. It's also all seen through like uh, Windows Movie Maker filters. Yeah, well, there you know, here you go. This is what I'm saying, man. There it is. It turns into, basically, Swamp Thing turns into a fucking giant mosquito. There's the connection. The Draniac is created by the bad energy, the bad juju, if you will, from the fucking giant mosquitoes attacking that house, and they created this uh, this fucking specter. Oh, man, it's a voodoo topa. Okay. But she wakes up in a cold sweat, and she's, like, screaming, and you just hear her dad from the other room, like, what the fuck you making all that noise for, girl? Shut the fuck up, Julie. I'm trying to drink. Like, you disrupted my beer. <laughs> uh, she, she, like, sits up and, like, just, just like, <gasps> and he's, like, what the fuck is all that noise? And I'm like, what noise are you? What are you talking about? I, I guess she actually got a full night's sleep, though, because she gets up and just goes for a run. We cut to morning, and it's jogging time for fucking six hours. It's jogging time to go be sad. Uh, I guess. She just gets up, and she's like, I'm going to go for a jog right to mom's grave. Well, here's the thing. That could be an effective scene if it wasn't like a minute and a half of her jogging interspliced with the gravestones, which you don't, I guess you're supposed to figure out the context for, but to me, it was just like, this is a really odd choice. This seems like three minutes of just her running around. Like, we we follow, we like run in real time from the house to the graveyard and then run back home in real time from the graveyard to the house. Yeah, and then it's all for her to run up to the graveyard, sit down, hug her knees and go, I don't blame you. And then she gets up and runs back home. I'm like, and before we even get to the end, I was like, okay, mom killed herself. I get it. This is going to be a thing that'll probably come up a lot on this episode. Or maybe it won't. Maybe we'll say it once and just get it over with. The ADR in this movie is atrocious. <laughs> it sure is. In some scenes, you can't even hear anybody because the ADR is actually that bad. Yeah, well, not even that. Like, it just doesn't match what they're fucking saying. No. And in and, and this scene in particular, she's walking around, there's leaves on the ground, and she steps, and then, like, there's a second or two pause, and then the fucking sound effect comes in. <laughs> and I'm just like, yeah, you couldn't line that up better? At some part, they, like, deliberately were like, uh, we don't like that line, but we're gonna show them talking and be like, <laughs> just read something else. The sound isn't actually bad in this. Uh, no, the sound, when it has to be squishy and gross, is fantastic. So then... Uh, she fucking jogs home, and her dad's like, where the fuck you been? I had to pack this whole car myself. Come on, we gotta go to this shitty house. She's like, fuck you, dad. I had to pick up something that wasn't a beer bottle today, and my elbows hurt, and I'm mad about it. You're so fuck. you're lazy. You're a lazy piece of shit. And then she says a weird thing. She's like, he's like, get in the car, we're leaving. She goes, no, dad, I'm all sweat. Well, she just went for a run, man. She's got to take a shower real quick. And he's like, fuck that. We're on the clock. Is that to say, like, I am now nothing but sweat and my corporeal form has dissolved? Factual. I am full of sweat. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. And then don't her friends, uh, like, show up immediately? I'm, oh, yeah. I'm going to use friends in quotation marks because I'm not sure if these people should be friends with anybody. Yeah, a bunch of extras from the Wonder Years fucking show up. <laughs> And they're like parked, they're, they're blocking her dad and who's clearly like in a hurry. Who the fuck are these people? I don't know. Daniel Stern starts narrating and he's like, and then we went to Julie's house that summer and her dad was a real dick. Julie turns to the side and there's like just Daniel Stern like crouched in a tree with a microphone. <laughs> Please ignore the men behind the leaves. Narrating the fucking scene. But it's Daniel Stern, so him crouching would just be like, who are the, what are those two giant knees over there? Like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it, what's that tree? Oh, that's just his that's, legs. Yeah, him crouching would look like a fucking, like, I don't know, it looks so bizarre. It looked like an alien. So, so yeah, they're like, hey, Julie, what's up? What are you doing? You, going with your, you want to go to the mall or what? And she's like, no, I got to go fix some shitty house with my dad. Do you want to help me? And they're like, fuck off, Julie. Uh, it's Saturday. Bye. We don't have plans or anything. We're just going to go leave and do nothing. It's like that thing, too, where, like, the dad plays it up. Like, oh, okay, honey, go say hi to your friends, and then we're leaving. But he's really a jerk-off, like, when nobody's around. Uh, And she's like, thanks, daddy. Okay, bye. Yeah, he's, like, smiling through his teeth kind of shit. Yeah, just, like sadistic, weird, disgusting shit. Hey, Julie, tell your friends that we have to go to work now, okay? Just gritting his teeth the whole time. It's gross. She gets in the car and he's driving her to this fucking location and the whole time he's just complaining. Ah, yeah, yeah, you need to see a shrink. You, you, you're crazy because she's upset about the mother still a year after she died. Daniel Baldwin, Baldwinning her, there we go, aggressively. I, Daniel Baldwin at least will scream in your face like that you're a moron. This guy's just like... 
uh, he, he, he's just giving her some emotional distress. Dad's is far more direct and precise where he's like, God, you're a fucking lunatic. You're worthless. But Daniel Baldwin's like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to scream at you incoherently while I drink. Yeah, I'm just screaming at you. And you're like, calm down, you fucking <laughs> lunatic. Yeah, like, he's like, he's like gaslighting her, man. He's like, he's like, oh, yeah, you fucking, uh, you still having those dreams? She's like, yeah. And he's like, yeah, it's because you're a fucking lunatic because you're crazy or whatever. You know, I. you want to go talk to somebody? I'm not paying for that shit. You're the crazy one. I should have dropped you on your head twice. What? What? Nothing. Keep driving. I'm looking for fucking Larry Fishburne to walk around the corner. Like, what are we doing here? <laughs> Such a fucking scumbag, this guy. Like, the dialogue from this dude in this movie is atrocious. He, he kind of reminds me of, you know, of a, of a similar, I guess I'll call this a B-movie, uh, that we watched, um... Home sweet home, the dad and that. Very similar kind of character. Just some dickhead who gets killed off screen. Oop, whoops, gave that one away. Uh, Oop. well, not quite. She's actually a good kid. Mistake's a fucking scum. Yeah. Well, you know, I liked Mistake. It was, uh, you know, but he had to go. Had to be done. His dad called him Mistake, okay? That, oh, let's just say <laughs> enough about that child. That's fair. They get to the house, and, and, and they walk up to this thing, and they start taking their equipment out, and I'm thinking, like, this guy's a contractor or some shit, and he's just got mops and buckets. I was like, oh, why aren't you just knocking this fucking thing down or or, or coming in and just breaking all the walls, and you're really going to just scrub the floor and sell it? You know what's funny about that? I read that this the production the, the the house they used for this was torn down as soon as they finished. It looks like it's condemned. Okay, uh, as somebody who fucking like used to go around with his uncles and shit and his dad and like fix out like do contracting shit like you are not cleaning anything in this house and then selling it like. It needs to be redone, like rebuilt even some of some my of it. My dad and my brother were doing this uh, about a year and a half ago, actually. Um, but yeah, having known what he does and having seen like kind of the work he's had to do in other houses. Yeah, you're not doing shit with a mop and broom. Like he said, to, he said to fix hand railings, he said to do quick fixes on, on big problems that like will get solved later on. But like just has to be like good enough to for someone to come look at it. Right. You got to replace the sheetrock. You got to replace some parts of the floor. You got to check the plumbing, the electric, what have you. This guy's like, yeah, just wash the fucking wash the floor i guess and it's good to go yeah just uh stare at some bathtubs and sinks for a few hours i'll be back <laughs> <laughs> i got business to take care of i gotta i gotta do some heavy lifting some beer in each hand so <laughs> she's like ah freddy krueger wouldn't live here and he goes who's that one of you moron friends all ah, right yeah immersion shattered you know who the fuck freddy krueger is like <laughs> Yeah, it's like, dude, I know you're a fucking sadistic drunk scumbag, but you know who the fuck Freddy Krueger is. People who aren't born know who Freddy Krueger is, okay? <laughs> you come out of the womb knowing a few things. You know who Co you know what Coca-Cola is, you know who Batman is, you know what Disney is. <laughs> and Freddy Krueger. So, so he fucking storms out of the house, and he's like, I'm going to drink, see ya. And, uh... <laughs> he's like, he's like, bye, bitch, and just gets... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he even says that. He's like, fucking bitch, bitch, bitch and moan. You know what? You useless. Fuck you. Bye. Well, because you know, he gets mad because when they, they they go to use the water, which magically turns on, it comes out like this diarrhea water. And he, wa he walks up. He's like, what'd you do? Yeah, because she throws a bunch of it out until it's like clean. And he gets pissed that he that he gets pissed that she wasted good water in his mind. And it's just like this brown mess. She should have had a moment where she looks back and she goes like, she looks at the water, looks at him and goes like, I don't think I know. I don't think you know what you're doing. <laughs> Look, Mr. Clean Magic Eraser can fix a lot of shit, but it ain't fixing anything in this fucking house. Oh, no. There's like fuck like there's <laughs> there's plaster coming off the walls, the wallpaper's all stained and fucking peeling off and fucking there's like pieces of floor missing and shit. The thing that would fix this house would be a bomb. Yeah. It's condemned. Rip it down. So yeah, then we cut back to her friends who are just like chilling at this diner or some shit. Yeah, and they're just being stupid. Like that's the best way I can describe <laughs> this. Like they're just like Well, they're all at Richie's Subworld, man. <laughs> Enjoying some tuna fish sandwiches, a little roast beef. This is a collection of collection of fucking dunces. Like this is just ev not, there's not a single brain cell between the three of these people. Well, all these people are supposed to be her, Julie's fucking friend, and they're talking shit about her behind her back about how she's a loser and a psycho. They're like, uh, I don't want to go to the mall because all day I don't want to go to the mall all day. So let's go visit Julie at her fucking shithole house she's cleaning. Let's go. Pity party our friend in her gross house? We could go home and read a book. We could watch a baseball game. 
let's go play some video games over at your house. I heard Mortal Kombat's at the pizza place. No, instead, let's go to some dirty old fucking house and bother our friend. You could take a nap. And then they're like, oh, I, uh, let's bring her some lunch or whatever. And they're like, that's a great idea. Let's do it. And then the collective intelligence and existence, st standard for existence gets lowered because this John Connor looking motherfucker named Wade rolls in. <laughs> he looks like John Connor if he grew up into Daniel Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> He's like stuck in between the forms currently. Okay, here's the thing. You say that, but I thought Stephen Baldwin almost immediately with John Connor's haircut. Yeah, well, that's what it is. It, see, it's the merging of the timelines this is what happens when you don't put the fucking stones back you get this two baldwins become one you must you must <laughs> you must unite what has been set asunder no one furlong becomes two baldwins <laughs> and that's not a world i want to live in oh, <laughs> not eyes at the fly <laughs> i'm just imagining like i'm just imagining ian mckellen like re like one furlong becomes two baldwins <laughs> <laughs> okay real quick uh this friend not not Wade. Who's the other guy who looks like fucking Jake? Jake. You, you got Jake. Lisa is like the only other, I guess, kind of nice friend. And then there's Tanya, which is the blonde haired girl. Okay. Who's the other? Who's the who's the redhead? Uh, Lisa. Lisa, who needs a fucking lozenge. All right. Somebody get this bitch a Ludens because <sighs> she's like, hey, 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 hey. the whole fucking movie. I can't hear what the fuck she's saying. Let's, let's go bring Joey some lunch. Um, it's fine. She sounds like the fucking boogeyman from Ghostbusters. Wait, stop. Stop, you're grossing me out, weed! That's hurting my throat. That's worse than the Hagstrom impression. Jesus Christ. I, that's what I'm saying, man. She needs a, oh she needs a fucking God. Ricola, man. A Ricola. You guys were going full raw head there for a second. <laughs> <laughs> he is good! Alta! Urinate on my face, raw head! Baptize me! Piss in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I smell it like it tastes. Chicken soup. Manelli's just lapping it up. <laughs> so... Jake, this Eddie Deason ass motherfucker, did anybody else recognize this guy? He had a very familiar face, but I couldn't place it. It's not the person I'm about to tell you who it is, but it sure as fuck looks like him. And I, if you, if we like bet money on it, I would have bet you like $200 that this was the kid. <laughs> You remember in Tommy Boy when uh, him and what's her face are like on the boat and those three kids are like heckling them from the shoreline? Vaguely. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, oh, hey, lady, you got a fat whale on your boat, free Willy. It's a big. It's like one of the biggest scenes of the movie. Like one of the one of the jokes. He's like, I'm gonna shove an oar up your ass, kid, or whatever. <laughs> no, the, yeah, <laughs> right. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Distinctly yeah. remember the whale comment. Yeah. Anyway, one of the uh, one of the kids' name on the on the shore is called Dov Typhenbach. And I could have swore that that fucking little kid was this guy, like, grown up some. And and the times, the time, like, fit, I'm pretty sure. You know who I thought it was? But, like, after I thought about it, it definitely wasn't? Who? I thought it was the fucking guy from uh, Rookie of the Year in Kid and King Arthur's Court for, like, a hot second. What? No, that's not what he, that guy looks like fucking Ralph Macchio or some shit. He kind of looks like that guy. He's like, and then like his fucking gold line is, he's like, I don't know why fucking uh, Julie's so upset. Like her mom died a year ago. Like get over it. And I'm like, ugh. I I I get upset when when animals who aren't mine get sick. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. Let alone my mother passing away. I would be over it in a year. Let alone my mother fucking killing herself. And especially in the graphic detail it happens in. And, uh, fun fact, like, I know a few people that happen to, and they're in their 30s, and they're not over it, so what the fuck would this dude open his mouth? Nobody would be. Yeah. Nobody. I'm also noticing, like, a strange trend that maybe I just didn't notice before starting this show, where just, like, I guess just teenagers are assholes. I think that's the the general consensus, but like I would like to say that they're just written that way, but like no, the real life teenagers are worse. Probably. Yeah, real life teenagers don't have the filter of a writer who may not be trying to like go too hard into like, you know, super shittiness, but like real life teenagers are like, let's lure that girl into the woods and stab her in the name of Slenderman. I mean I'm just thinking back to movies like Devin's Ghost, uh, excuse me, Devon's Ghost and, uh, you know, <laughs> Venom, uh, you know, even House of the Dead, we'll throw that in there. My brain went right back to John Hurt's unconscious body through a fucking table. <laughs> <laughs> 
my point being that it just seems like a lot of these movies that we've watched that have like the 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 teenage angst in them. It they're they're always as shitty as they are in like every well, other. Well, I guess especially in, like horror films, um, they all have to be almost immediately detestable so that so when someone comes along and inevitably murders them, you're kind of like, eh, fuck them. I was really, you know, and I, I can't wait till we get to that part in this movie. None of these people are likable though at all. Yeah, and like. None of them properly pay the toll for how shitty they are. No. One of them does. One of them one of them earns his justifiably. Everyone else is just kind of like a garbage person who probably should maybe shouldn't have died. Um, but probably got a little bit of an extra like they, no one learns any lessons. No, they also don't have like any motivations either. They're just kind of like there, lingering around, waiting to do something, but don't really. They are very like I think they're they they're kind of like what baby boomers think millennials actually are, just kids who loaf around going like, ah ha ha, and do nothing. Like, mostly what these kids are doing. They just kind of... The exception of Julie, who's at a job um, and attempting to do something. She's not working, dude. She's just walking around this house. <laughs> She's... She is occupying her time, okay? <laughs> she is. She's trying to work, but she goes to pour that water on the floor, and it just fucking disappears into the corners of the wall. And she's like, huh, ain't that a thing? Then she goes upstairs, and she's checking out the fucking bathtub, man, and it's filled with leaves and shit, and she has, like, I don't know, a, an existential moment. That fucking, that fucking effect is so cool. Like, it's just, like, again, like, it's just reverse photography, but, like... When she fucking spills that water all over the place and it sucks into the walls, that I would be like, okay, I'm the fuck out of this house. Like, what? What are you doing? Oh, there are there oh, are yeah. multiple instances where I'd be like, I no, I would wait outside with her dad and be like, oh, you want to go inside the haunted house? Knock yourself out. Um, in fact, I wouldn't. Actually, I wouldn't tell dad anything. I'd be like, oh yeah, it's done. Go ahead, go inside and look. Well, the whole movie kind of plays the angle where it's like, well, she's disturbed from I guess what happened with her mom. So, yeah, so you don't really know if she's like hallucinating or like it's really there or not. And they there's like a few of those gags. And then it just all that shit goes right out the window at the end. But, um, well, yeah, because this scene, she sees this like uh, this, this, you know, mess of a bathtub. And uh, there's there's a fucking rat in there and she gets freaked out and leaves the room. And uh, the, the camera kind of lingers on the sink. And this fucking thing claw fucking comes out of it and snaps up the friggin' rat. And you just kind of hear it get killed off screen. He has like a tentacle. And then she's like, she's like in this room and she sees this old book and she like opens it up. Oh, yeah. And there's like a picture of this woman, like an old picture of this woman. And uh, spoilers, like later she like sits down with her friends because her friends come. I'm kind of jumping around a little bit, but like, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, you mean the the book with the picture were uh, with Jillian Anderson in it? <laughs> I swear to God, I thought that was fucking Scully. Was that Scully? Might have been. I, it looks so much like her. Yeah, she finds this fucking picture in the book, and then like she hears something in the bathroom, and like a hand shoots out, and then she's like, "I was dreaming. My friends are here." So she goes downstairs, and her friends come in, and she's like, "I found this old picture in a book," and she gives it to her friends. And they're like, wow, that looks just like your mom, Julie. And she's like, it's not my mom. And, and they hand it to the other person. And they're like, oh, that really does look like your mom. She's like, it's not my fucking mom. And they're like, yeah, we know we're not saying that it's your mom, but it looks like her. But this goes nowhere. No, she just gets upset. It goes nowhere, especially because they bring in a, uh, this visually contradicted later on in the film is the, is the wording I'll use. It's not followed up on. There's no really like, there's no reason for it to be there. You know? No, and and honestly, like, my mind was racing, believe it or not, even for this movie, trying to understand, you know, okay, where are they going to go with this? Like, is the house going to be like, are they going to try to contact the mother? Right. And, and they actually get this demon or whatever the fuck it's supposed to be. Or, you know, there's so many different angles you could have played with that. And, and because it goes nowhere, it's like, why was why was it even there? I don't know. And, like, <laughs> the house is like a bad medium. It's like, call your mother. She killed herself. Oh, I'm really sorry. Bye. <laughs> I'm really bad at this. I thought uh I thought it might have been some kind of like metaphor for like her sadness she's inferred from the death of her mother and she's kind of like created because like angsty teens usually are the center of like poltergeist activity. I think they even say that in the movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, they definitely do. Yeah, but like that's a thing, you know. Real quick before they uh before her friends do get to the house, uh they they basically they leave that uh Richie subworld and uh, the Wade fucking comes up and he follows him. He's trying to be all sly and shit. 
and he he comes up. He literally walks up to the back window where Lisa's sitting. They're stopped at a light, by the way. Yeah, they're stopped at a fucking red light, like right up the street. And he's like trying to like wet Willie or some horse shit, trying to get in the car. What is this dude's angle? Like, I don't understand this dude's entire life. Like, first of all, how hasn't someone just shot him yet? I don't know. He's a fucking scumbag. He's like, want to see my hog? He's a scumbag who's constantly showing up in people's lives, and I don't know why they just run his ass over. Uh, well, they get him pretty fucking good. They do. Yeah, because Lisa, you know, she kind of grabs him. I, I forget the semantics of it, but she gets him, like, kind of locked in between her and the car, and she grabs this fucking dog leash that I guess just, it's somebody's dog now doesn't have its leash, but uh, <laughs> she, she straps it to his fucking earring. And she's holding on, and, and uh, Jake guns it, and he starts freaking the fuck out. And she lets it go, and he's like, oh, my God. And she's like, gotcha, asshole, and gives him the finger and drives away. Anyway, they, they get him good. They get him good, and then they all arrive at the at the house. I just, I remember wrote down, I wrote down, why is she friends with these people? So I'm assuming one of them opened their mouths and proved themselves. <laughs> Who's the blonde again? Tanya. Tanya's like, Tanya's like, oh, can I have some water? And she's like, oh, you don't want to drink the water in this place. He's like, not to drink, to wash my hands. And she's like, all right, it's in the kitchen. So she goes in the kitchen. Tanya goes in the kitchen and she like turn and the orchestra starts up. <laughs> She turns on the nozzles, and this fucking sink goes, like, fucking crazy, and the faucet explodes and just douses this woman in water. It, but, but like, not, not like, just water, like, sprayed out of it, like, awkwardly. Like, they come back in the kitchen after she, like, freaks out, and it literally fucking exploded. The metal's all bent. What, isn't someone like, what'd you do, Tanya? Like, <laughs> she's like, I don't know. Somebody threw a bucket of water on me from off screen. <laughs> Yeah, she's 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 crying and complaining because she gets all wet. And Jake, I think, is the one that's like, "Oh yeah, what's the big fucking deal, you baby?" <laughs> she's like, "I'm wet here." You can't even use a sink, right? Stupid. She's she's soaked, and uh, this is the most this is the stupidest thing because they're like, "Oh, I need to change of clothes, or I need to like dry off her towel or something." She's and then Julie goes, "Hold on, I'm going to see if I can find some." old clothes upstairs in this house to wear what nope are you fucking serious i would rather set myself on fire let me find some crusty old fucking shit garbage clothes in an attic let me let me let me go outside and start weaving a shirt from grass i mean honestly if she wants to find some clothes she can look in the basement they're a little waterlogged and she's gonna have to peel some body parts (laughs) off of it but that that coat Marv's wearing is pretty nice. Yeah, you could even she might even have to check the shoes. She's got three or four different options down there. She does styling. I mean, you're not getting any of that dumb waiter. That's all chopped up. Yeah, you know Hendrix's feet are sticking out like the Wicked Witch of the fucking West. So you know, if, you, if they're your size, they're up for grabs. <laughs> his fucking feet. She takes the <laughs> shoes off and his feet curl up. He's got the fucking black and white striped socks on. Yeah. You just hear the fucking Stooges playing in the background. <laughs> yeah, you know it's it, it's kind of like off in the distance though. So it's it, instead of it just like being the music, it's it's kind of echoing like Julie, <laughs> Julie, Julie, because that happens a lot. A bunch of midgets fucking pop out of the walls and they're like, "The Wicked Witch is dead. You killed him. The Hendrix is dead. The <laughs> Hendrix is dead. The Hendrix is dead." The Lollipop Guild comes out and starts doing a fucking ditty for. We represent, but are legally distinct from the Lollipop Guild. We represent the Draniac guy. Draniac Guild would have worked too. Draniac Guild. Anyway, we sentence you to this fucking scum house. She's like, "Yeah, I'm gonna go find some dirty fucking clothes for you in the house," and then she just goes upstairs and seemingly forgets that what she's doing yeah because isn't she she just walks into another bathroom well she goes into like a bedroom that's up there okay, and she's kind of yeah. going through like the drawers and the closet and she can't find shit i can't tell i can't tell one piece of shit room for the next because they all just look like someone oh, yeah. took the saw bathroom and cloned it 15 times or it's you know it's like that uh the the, the fucking set for uh in pursuit with the jail cell that they reused like three or four different times there's a fu- <laughs> the fuck ladders in the background coolio's in the other corner just checking out his la paz postcard he's just reading it over weeping <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Julie, she's looking around this fucking this room upstairs, and then the walls of the fifty third precinct start bleeding. Yeah, and then she's attacked with a toxic avenger who comes lumbering out of the fucking closet. <laughs> He does look like a fucking trauma team member. He does. And the first time, that my, the first words of my mouth, I was like, Toxie's back. Julie just lets out, I'll never go back to Nukem High. <laughs> <laughs> and then she marries him, because that's seemingly what happens in every Toxic Avenger movie, is the, 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 lead, <laughs> the, the lead actress always marries him or something. She's blind, so it's fine. <laughs> Doesn't that actress change every film? Uh, yes. And yeah, it gets a little weird for a second. Like, the walls actually bleed. Yeah, well, the door bleeds. Yeah, the door bleeds. I'm not sure how this was, a, was achieved, because... The, it's 
Spoilers, it's not the real Toxic Avenger or a zombie creature. It's Dickhead Wade in a fucking mask. Slapnuts Wade, um, uh, who's... Slapnuts! Fucking teleported into the house? How did he get in there without them knowing? I have no idea. He's Michael Myers, man, he just creeps in. He's in the closet, no one knows how he got up there, but he's in there. He could just phase through walls? It'd be funny if he was, like, Kane Hodder and just, like, leap through a fucking window with his seven-foot-tall ass, but no one pays attention to him. <laughs> So, yeah, it's Wade, and he's in a fucking, like, costume, zombie costume. Where'd he get the costume? I don't fucking know. And he's, like, fake choking Julie or whatever, and she's, like, screaming and freaking out, and he's like, gotcha. <laughs> she's got, like, I don't know, he's got, like, dirt all over him or some kind of black shit all over him. And then everybody runs upstairs, and they're like, oh, Wade, you asshole. Why, what are you doing here? Get out of here. You mutant. Tanya, Tanya calls him a shit and a mutant, and I'm just like, you know, Howard the Duck's somewhere smiling. <laughs> <laughs> she calls him an asshole like six times, and it's like, yeah, okay, we get you. You're ad-libbing the whole scene. Oh, yeah, this this black crud, like, he has it all over him, and he, like, he smears it over Julie, but I think the next scene, all of it's gone. No, it's still on her, because she's like, she's like, she wants a moment alone or whatever, and everybody goes downstairs, and she, like, goes into the bathroom where she previously saw that fucking tub full of shit water, right? And now she's looking at it, and it's, like, crystal clear. Yeah. And she proceeds to take all of her clothes off and get into the tub. What? Yeah, this was really bizarre for uh, a few minutes. I mean, it's a dream within a dream, but it's just, like, why would you ever? Y yeah, like, I don't care if the water was... was, uh, was pristine and looked like it would, uh, I don't know, make me younger by slipping into it. I still wouldn't get into this fucking tub in this house. I'd be like, you bring that tub outside. I'll do it out there. It's the water at once, Jordy. It's a concept that I would almost get, that I could almost get behind if done more effectively because there's been plenty of horror movies or, you know, I guess I could even just say movies in general that have had that scene where it's like, oh, you don't know they're dreaming, but like, you're not totally sure, and then they wake up. Whereas this movie is just like, yeah, this makes zero sense whatsoever. Or in my, like, and through my eyes, this movie was like, we saw a Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, yeah, ex exactly. Well, sure, but like, I was hoping that this was actually really happening. Oh, yeah, me too. That would have been really interesting to kill your fucking main character. And the creature looks cool as hell. Oh, yeah, it's at the source of my disappointment this whole sequence, because I was like, if you set up a main character, then you offed her halfway through, I'd actually applaud that move. Yeah, because, it I mean, you're subverting my expectations, but also, like, you're doing it in a way where it's not stupid. <laughs> like, Well, that and I, I would legitimately wonder where the movie would go from that point, exactly. because I wouldn't have counted on anybody else to show up. No. Least of all, whoever shows up later. Then it's the Wade show. <laughs> Wade's face turn. Yeah, so she's having this dream, um, and she's in this water, and then, like... Okay, this effect sequence is pretty fucking sweet. Like, if anything about this film that I absolutely love and can't say enough good things about is the effects. The fucking tub starts, like, bleeding? Yeah, from, like, the sides and the ring of the water, right? Yeah, it, it's, like, pouring out from, like, the drain top where, like, you'd switch the fucking, you know, to either keep the water in the tub or let it, let it down. And uh, it's pouring out of there. And then these fucking tendrils come out of the drain? And start, like, finding their way around the tub and then, like, wrapping themselves around Julie and then suck her down the fucking drain in, like, a bloody spray of shit. Yeah, it's kind of cool. It's um, awesome. And it's, it's more blob vibes for me because uh, one of my favorite film memories ever was seeing that moment from the blob remake where the guy got pulled through a fucking drain. Oh, the sink? Um, yeah, it's good. See, yes, that shit. In the diner? Yeah, fuck that yeah. That shit tra traumatized me for <sighs> like two weeks. Now I want to watch that. That movie's so fucking good. Yeah, it reminded me of that and like, it did, you don't get the visual treat of like, this dude's fucking whole head going into a hole that it cannot fit into. Yeah. Um, but aesthetically, it kind of is the same thing. I said the remake, by the way, for people listening, the Blob, 88 Blob. Yeah, the Blob remake, if you have not seen it, you need to fucking watch it. Yeah. So yeah, aesthetically reminded me of that, and I kind of dug it, uh, but then it pulled it back out, and she's like, oh man, what a weird dream for the second time in 24 hours. Well, she wakes up, and she's like, oh, and she's in the tub, in the crystal clear tub, and I'm like, wait a second, so that didn't happen, but the water's still clean and then she wakes up again and she's standing next to the tub and there's still shit in it then she wakes up again and she's in bed with what's his nuts from runestone and his girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> and then she gets up to use the bathroom and a fucking werewolf arm comes out of the mirror yes. no that doesn't that doesn't happen <laughs>
I can't believe my brain went to that episode. So she, yeah, so she's like in the bathroom and she's uh, she's like having a nervous breakdown because like she's. She had this crazy dream, but I guess it was just, like, so real for her. And she's like, I'm going insane. I'm crazy. Which would lead you to believe that the shit's really not happening, right? Her her dad's, like, outside throwing rocks the window. He's like, you are! I told you, you're useless. Daniel Baldwin's like, you're doing a good job, Dad. How does this guy have a fucking, have any income coming in? Buying houses like this. Let, look, yeah, you mean, how does he go fucking afford all of his, uh, his hate beer? <laughs> his hate beer? Is that like Budweiser? Coors Light. He's living off a pretty hefty life insurance payout, so he's just trying to make it last as oh, long as possible. No. Ouch. Oh. I mean, they didn't catch him put the Drano in his wife's drink, so... She didn't, they didn't catch him putting the fucking gun in her mouth. Yeah, his, his, his favorite beer is just hate brow <laughs> master hate brow hate brow there's a subtle thing there where it's almost like implied that julie thinks that maybe her father had more to do with her mother's death than 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 other people think yeah i thought i remember her saying like and she starts to go that direction but then the movie just kind of pulls it back well we're gonna get to that because that's coming up a little bit later and like the fact of the matter is like she th- basically thinks that her father might have coerced her a little bit more. Yeah. But, like, why... I don't know. We'll get to that, because I want to unpack that a little bit. So, it's just a dream, and she's like, I'm going crazy. Oh, poof, gotta get out of here. So she goes downstairs, and, like, they confront Wade, and Wade is, like, sitting on her couch, like, eating french fries or some shit. Why hasn't he left? I don't know, and why is he there? Like, this creeped me out, man, because it's like, you have three little women and, like, a wet towel fucking dude, and this big... <laughs> And this big, oafy, fucking, obnoxious scumbag at this abandoned house in the middle of fucking nowhere, and just the type of person this guy is, I just, I don't know, man. I felt super uncomfortable the whole time throughout the re- throughout these next few scenes. Wade gave me the creeps immediately, but then gets progressively uh, less easy to handle f- physically as it goes on because he just gets more... One, he starts off just overbearing. Yeah. And then two, he gets creepy, and then three, he gets downright scary. Well, yeah, because it's not like... He's not like that dude who's a real asshole, but then it turns out he's like, oh, he's not so bad. No, he's just an asshole. No, he fucking quadruples down. This guy is a fucking nightmare. Um, yeah, this guy deserves two bullets in the back of the head. He's so p- fucking terrible. Just put him down and let's not talk about it. The boy's not right. <laughs> Well, you know, he starts the situation with they're berating him and he he grabs Tanya and he's got her like on his lap and and won't let go. He's like tickling her. And she's clearly uncomfortable. And then like quickly escalates into like sexually assaulting her. Yeah. Yeah. He's like smacking her ass or whatever. And he's like, yeah, he pulls her on the couch and starts making her beg. He pulls her on the couch and starts spanking her. Uh, yeah. And then starts making her beg. And Jake, Jake and Lisa are on the fucking sidelines just watching. No one does anything. And that's part of this whole sequence that makes it so unbearable because no one's lifting. No one lifts a fucking finger. And how many times do you think like this situation has actually played out like in real life? You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Where people just fucking stand by and let the shit happen because the shittiest part about that whole scene too is is lisa's going looking at jake like hey you gonna do something about it and he's like who and he me kind of cowers but like she's just as bad she could have easily went up there and said something I, yeah. yeah and it's pretty like it's pretty telling that like wade shows up is it immediately reprehensible in different ways and still manages to linger about and have no one forcefully have him leave or kick his ass look the three of them could have totally fucked this dude up he's so grossly enabled by these people and it just made me uncomfortable um and then it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse because they're afraid of him and that's gross i I mean i kind of would be too with the way this guy's acting like god only knows you go and beat the shit out of him and prove a point he comes back and shoots you all yeah or some shit you know not to get that morbid but just kill him and fucking leave him in the basement nobody's coming nobody's buying this house yeah leave him next to harry and marv no one no one took their fucking bodies yeah and the fucking two bums in the beginning no one he would fit right in the house would absorb them no more wade so so then like she gets up like again this is like a whole series of events so she like so Tanya, like, you know, Wade lets Tanya go, and she gets up, and she's like, hey, a fucking bitch has got no sense of humans. And then she, like, goes outside for air or something, and then he's, like, watching her out the window. Now, I thought here he was going to come out and be like, hey, you know, like, sorry for being a scumbag or whatever. Doesn't he try to, and then immediately just, like, does an about face? No! He comes out, and he's like, oh, I was watching you through the window, and uh, you're, you're fucking sexy. I didn't realize how sexy you was. And he says, he says, I love the way you feel squirming in my lap and then fucking 
grabs her and then throws her to the ground and then essentially is about to rape her. Now, I think this is where people actually make an attempt to stop him. And then, um, yeah, uh, who's well, it's the other Lisa is the one. Yeah. Lisa like runs out and she's like, what are you doing? And then Jake fucking pulls him off and fucking punches him right in the face. And I was like, Whoa, oh, that's right. These two. That's great. OK. Well, this this actually shattered the uh, the discomfort because they start punching each other and as soon as their fists make contact, they're both spitting out buckets of blood. Like, oh yeah, it's like Mortal Kombat. <laughs> yeah, when Wade fucking when Wade fucking hits Jake, it's like whoopsie, and he's just like yeah. uppercutted, <laughs> and there's he's shit all over the place. Immediately just bloody everywhere. Um, and then like Jake hits Wade, and Wade does the same thing. He's like <laughs> and spits out seventy eight teeth. He beats the piss out of Jake. Also, I I don't mean to undercut it, but it's like this guy straight up tried to like rape this woman. Yeah. Why aren't we, like, beating the shit? Like, why aren't we, like, I don't know. Forget class. Grab a bat. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, I have I have two thoughts on this. Like, one, why are the characters in the movie, like you guys are saying, not reacting way harsher on, about this? And two, like, why did the director or the writer of this film feel like he had to go that far to prove this guy's an asshole? Like, we, we were good enough with the spanking. He could have just easily went upstairs after that, and just the next scene could have happened. And I, I would have been okay. This movie is, this here's the weird part too. Like this movie is like a comedy horror and it's like, this has no place here for me. Like if you're going to play it, the movie more like straight, then maybe, cause this is the scariest part of the fucking film. Yeah. I'm just saying like, yeah, I guess it paints a picture that this guy's a scumbag, but it's like, do we really need to take it that far? Like, I don't know. It's effective, I guess. I don't think... I mean, it's... Yes, it's effective, but I, don't, I just don't think it needs to be there. It's unnecessary for this kind of film. I I agree with you, Jay. Uh, for sure. No, it's 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 why... We, we've talked about this on Phantoms a couple times. Like, we're not really cool with using uh, rape or or uh, horrifying sexual assaults as a plot device because, A, it's... it's a and, and B and C. It's never used right. It only makes you feel dirty. And at the end of the day, it always comes off as feeling unnecessary. It's totally unnecessary. Even in films, but like even in films like I Spit on Your Grave and shit, like it's gratuitous in that movie. And then like yeah. it's like a revenge flick. That's really the only circumstance it works under as like an exploitative right, kind right. of. Yeah. Or if you're watching a film like Irreversible because you fucking hate yourself for oh, a day. Oh, Jesus. Um, and you just want to suffer for 90 minutes. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I don't want to like go too deep into that because it's such a larger topic overall no but i i just want to make a point about that because it's just like to me i could have done without it and I, I can only imagine people that saw this movie or have seen movies that do this kind of shit that's just like supposed to be taken as like either like i said like an excuse to hate a character or as like as it's used basically as the point of a basically used as a punchline it's like you know you get people that relive their trauma when they see shit like this and it's like supposed to be a pretty lighthearted film overall so, for sure it's supposed to be goofy and it's just not in that area if you're gonna go that route you better have the comeuppance of the offending party be extra fucking severe yeah um, and it better be it better be as satisfying as winning a million dollars to watch it's not enough like i, I wanted to see <laughs> this happen more more or less i wanted yeah. to see more of this yeah uh so yeah so wade like is going to walk into the house and julie comes in because, she's like, because by the way guys it gets worse yeah it sure does uh julie walks out and she's like she's like hey what's going on he's like nothing and then wade like goes past her or he's like i gotta take a whiz wait a second after he punches Jake in the face, he fucking punches what's her face yeah, in the face. Yeah, because Lisa tries to stop him and he turns and cracks her in the face. And that's kind of when, like, it. If I was in a room full of people, I feel like a hush would have fell over everybody. Like, what the f like that didn't need to fucking happen either. That's basically yeah. what happens. Yeah. Like he punches he punches Jake and then Lisa goes stop and he fucking cracks her in the face and then he just like stops and he's like, uh, I gotta take a piss. And he, yeah, I for like while we're talking about tone, like it does punch a giant hole no pun intended at all like in the, the 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 aesthetic of your film and the feel of it because now it's like dude this isn't cool or funny or 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 conveying any of the emotions you've been previously trying to convey this is shocking for no reason like we know this guy's a scumbag yeah and now it's just like overkill and then after that he fucking walks past Julie comes out and he like walks past her and he fucking licks her on the face. Yeah. And then goes into the house. And again, no one and Jake's sitting there just fucking sitting there in his own misery, covered in well, blood. He's all beat to fuck in the corner. Yeah. Our quote unquote heroes have all been embarrassed, assaulted, uh, and humiliated. Yeah. Uh, and then Wade goes to take a piss. <laughs> 
and that's it. Like, he's still in the yeah. fucking house. Like it's so yeah. like uncomfortable. St- no one told no one told him to leave. No one no one properly gives him a you know a what for? No, nope. uh, nothing. No, he just walks in and goes like, "Gotta urinate." Well, and I and I guess this is the film's version of po- fi- this is the film's version of poetic justice. I suppose. I guess it's not, it's not good enough, but it's good enough. I, I mean, it's, it'll do, but I would have wanted more. If you're gonna go that far, this needs to go farther. So he fucking goes into the bathroom and he's taking a piss, and the fucking tendril comes out of the toilet and like rips his fucking dick <laughs> off. <laughs> it. <laughs> okay, I will say like it. It's not like a grab and like a slow twist. It reaches up and goes poop, and just rips it all off. And then he's just spurting blood all over the fucking wall. Um, it's not like Hostel Two where that girl cuts what's his fuck, what's his nuts dick and balls off with a pair of scissors over a few agonizing seconds. It reaches up and just goes like a fucking cork <laughs> out of out of a champagne bottle. Pulls it right into the toilet. And then he's seemingly sucked in in the next frame he's gone he's in the toilet yeah like via street trash yeah what would have been really satisfying is if we got a wide shot of him getting pulled in from like the groin area and he just bends backwards like a fucking cracker like (laughs) oh man if we fucking if we nancy's mom this fucking guy through this little toilet hole that would have been great and just watch his stupid ass legs just like go flail and yell silly and just go That's so satisfying to me to suck a fucking dummy through that little hole. Like, it's just because it's so unnatural and it's disgusting. So, and, and some silly looking shit, too. Like, it's yeah. so funny looking to this day. Because that's not what would happen at all. Correct at all. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the shit I'm looking for in this film. You know what I mean? Yeah. This water elemental, if you will, it really only kind of has two ways of attack. It, it pretty much just, like, sucks you up, hence the name Draniac, or it. it it sucks you up and then you disappear or it sucks you up but like the only thing left is like your skeletons but your like skeleton is one of the skeletons from fucking Mars attacks that got shot by one of the Martians laser beams. It either melts you or sucks you into a pipe. I would say it has an ultimate attack. It's got its uh, spirit bomb if you will. It's gonna use later on. That's only after it's fucking really pissed off and like challenged. So yeah Wade gets pulled into a toilet seat and uh, quite frankly uh, I mean it's okay I guess I would rather see him get churned in a fucking wood chipper. Yeah. Yeah, just Steve Buscemi's in there like, yeah, <laughs> there's still room for more and more. Oh, you too? <laughs> so, like, the fucking blood, like, gets sucked back into the toilet, you know, the reverse photography thing again, which is cool. And then they're, like, outside, and I guess they've all had enough of his shit finally. Now, he's already dead. Now, this is it, it and they're like... Fucking Jake goes to the back of his car and pulls out like a tire iron, and they're like, "Oh, what are you gonna fucking hit him in the head?" And he's like, "Yeah, I got a plan. You guys take all your clothes off and go in there and distract him, and I'll hit him with this when he's not looking." Even their revenge made me uncomfortable. Yeah, like <laughs> what, Jake? You little fucking pervert scumbag! Like, what are you talking about, Jake? How about you go stand next to Wade and we'll beat both of you up? This guy's trying to fuck. Like, he's just as scumbagish. He's just as much as a scumbag as Wade is, but like not outwardly. He's like, I gotta, I'm gonna fuck one of these girls. Yeah, he goes, uh, take all your clothes off and run in. I'll come up behind you. Yeah. He, look, he's Granny Van Dan's fucking uh, godson or grandson. <laughs> or the fuck, right? Oh my god, she's wearing a fucking Eddie Deason suit. And she's like, <laughs> come on, girls, take off your clothes. Go inside and distract, make him t- turn around and take off your clothes. <laughs> Don't worry about it. She just, she just, she just dis- devolves into that. <laughs> oh god, she is Draniac. I've been guarding this house for years. <laughs> she can't help herself. She's like, she goes to the drive-thru. She's like, I'll take four large... Take off your clothes. <laughs> <laughs> they finally get inside, and, you know, Wade gets sucked into the toilet, and Jake drops, you know, that this fucking great one-liner that he stole from Jurassic Park, and he just goes, ah, right, when you gotta go, you gotta go. And then they just leave. I, I don't remember where Julie is, to be honest. George Lucas shows up with this fucking golden baseball bat, and he's like, how dare you steal from my friends? Who said Who said you could stay, take stuff from his movie for your movie? <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that? I haven't cleaned the blood off of Jerry. Leave the gun. Take the Star Destroyer. <laughs> It just like Sean said, like they seemingly are just like, well, he's not in here. Gotta go. Bye. And they're just like, see you, Julie. He's not here. That means he must. That means he must be gone. Yeah, <laughs> he's not in the bathroom, so I guess he's not in the house. Is, she, is Julie like outside, rubbing her head in the dirt, trying to get like Wade's, you know, lick mess off her face? Ugh. <laughs> But her friends are like babies. Like, you take something out in front of their face, it's just, it doesn't exist anymore. It's like, oh, Wade's not in the bathroom. That means he's gone from our existence forever. 
and we should we should ignore the assault and rape attempts. Yeah, because there's no blood or anything. So there's like you know the house cleaned it all up. So you don't you know they don't even know he's dead. They just have object permanence about Wade specifically. He, he must have gone to pee next door, which is three miles away. He's the kind of guy you want to forget after you see him. Anyway, yeah, uh, I wish I could. They flee into the car and they're going to leave to go to I guess to the mall is their plan. And they back up about a foot and a half, and what was previously just like a four-inch puddle turns into a fucking swamp. It's like fucking Dagobah all of a sudden. Yeah. Yoda's in the background saying, <laughs> only do, do not try. Or... The, the fucking car sinking into the goddamn swamps of Dagobah. They go to walk back in the house, and they're like, what's in there? Yoda's like, only what you take with you. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> a tree in the backyard just lights on fire, and you just hear Mark Hamill screaming, the sacred text! The sacred mop! The sacred mops! <laughs> No, no one's startled by this because only Julie hears it. Let's be real. Julie, Julie just stands there with a smug ass fucking look on her face, and they're sinking in the car into this bog, and they like jump out of the car at the last second before it sinks. And, like, and Jake's like, "My car!" And then Julie's like, "All right, you believe me now? <laughs> Come on, let's go back in the house." Like nothing. This g- girl. Like, I get it. She's crazy or whatever. Or she's supposed to be crazy. Like, for somebody who's dealing with such heavy emotional um, problems, she just doesn't give a fuck about anything. She's just like, oh, that's weird. Look, there's a ghost. It must be the ghost. See, I wasn't crazy. I, I mean, it's the moral of the story that she ends up in a fucking straight jacket and she's just like, been imagining this the whole time. Like, she really killed her friends the second they showed up. Well, that's what I was waiting for. Like, her to be, like, locked up or some shit. And, like, she, like, just made this all up, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. Instead, we got the next 40 minutes. <laughs> hey, hey, 20 of them are fr- fucking fantastic. Oh, yeah. So then we go to the uh, the bar from Cheers. Uh, but everyone hates your face instead of everyone knows your name. Where everybody hates your face, and they want to touch your daughter's breast. Oh, you ruined it. We got fucking Rodney Dangerfield and, like, fucking, I don't even know what, Peter Gabriel sitting on this fucking bar. Um, and you can't really make out what the two guys around Dad are saying, because they're being drowned out by, like, the mixing of the background noise, quote-unquote, for the bar. Yeah. And so it's just, like, it's just him, like... Yeah, my daughter's really useless. Some guy goes like... <laughs> it's just a bunch of old fucking peppers that hate their lives, and they just like, ah, what'd you do today? I ah, worked all day, and now I'm here because heh, the wife... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. And it's a lot of like, it's a lot of like manly smiles. And someone will say something and then manly smile, nod, sip. I wouldn't be surprised if you have turned your fucking head left and the real life Peter Griffin would be sitting there for God's sake. Like, <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like straight out of a fucking cartoon. Like Barney fucking is in the background burping, you know. This is like the scene from the Twilight Zone movie where fucking Vic Morrow is like sitting around with his friends at the bar yeah. and he's just like going off on a fucking racist tangent. So Julie's dad is getting soaked at this fucking bar, and, like, he's just going on about her, like, ah, she's so fucking lazy, and blah, 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 and Rodney Dangerfield sitting next to him is like, hey, hey, wait, what do you, what do you, wait, what's wrong with your daughter, or whatever, and he's like, ah, she, you know, she, she wants more money, she needs it, she needs it. It's just an infant loop of a conversation happening all day. Yeah. And he's like, oh, what are you talking about? What about your daughter? She's useless. What do you mean? What about your daughter? <laughs> you know what I just realized? Here, Here's the fucking part of the plot that we're missing. You know, they, they must have cut this for time. But his, Julie's dad is actually at the restaurant at the end of the universe. He's there with Granny Van Dam and fucking Zaphod Beeblebrox and John <laughs> Hurt and Meshach Taylor. And they're all there having a fucking laugh. I hope they don't get the special or they switch to the special, right? The soup. Yeah, John, he took care of that. You know, he's already dealt with that a couple of times. He's had, you know, you know, children, if you want to call them that, expunged from his body. Yeah. So are you telling me the only way to temporarily subdue this ta- this temporal maniac is to in- to it to have him <laughs> ingest an alien parasite? So it shatters his rib cage once a month like <laughs> That's why the that's why the engineers made the xenomorphs, man. To go back in time and destroy John Hurt from ruining the timeline. John Hurt, like, lifts his shirt up. He's like, look, no bones left. I have nothing. It's all college. Unfortunately, John Hurt is traveling around John Hurt is traveling around the universe and, you know, parallel dimensions and whatnot with the time stone somewhere inside his car. You know, his car is the Infinity Gauntlet, as we've established in a previous episode. Oh, man, he fucking keeps the alien in his chest at bay with the time stone. Yeah. That's what happens. He just keeps it fucking in that infinite loop of gestation and it never fucking <laughs> comes out. Xenomorph, I've come to make a deal. <laughs> St- 
stop this. <laughs> Pretty much. Yep. So dad's just like lamenting his daughter's very existence. He's like, blah, 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 There's nothing wrong with his daughter, and he's just like making shit up. He's just like, I deal with her for 17 years. She, I mean. she summons the devil every night, and she lights the house on fire. She killed the cat 14 times. Uh, She totally killed her mom. She's got a job. She works for me, but I don't pay her because I clothe and feed her. Fuck it. She gave me, she gave me cancer, I think. I don't know. I can't confirm that one. So he's basically just like, yeah, she owes me. And I'm like, you are a fucking scumbag. And he's sitting with all these fucking people, these guys at the fucking bar. Rodney Dangerfield sitting next to him, and he's like, he's like, he's like, well, guys, I gotta go. He fucking sucks down the rest of his core's light, and he's like, yeah, if that girl doesn't have the house clean by the time I get back, I'm gonna have her ass. And then fucking Rodney Dangerfield goes, if you could have her ass, can I have a tits? <laughs> and I'm like, you're talking about this dude's daughter, and he just. And fucking Julie's dad just smiles and walks out of the bar. And first of all, he's not drinking Bud Light. It's still hate brow, okay? Oh, okay. Sorry. It's fucking... <laughs> the, fir- the, fir- the first official beer of the movie Dumpster Universe. But it just says beer on the side. <laughs> hate brow. Um, and then he gets into his car and decides to drive. So if you didn't hate him already... He's in a fucking minivan. That's why he's so mad. That's all mom left him. Oh, all I got is this minivan. Fucking mom shoots herself in the face and here I am. My wife shoots herself in the face and all I get is this crappy minivan. They imply that he's, like, abusing Julie, but, like, they don't go into that yeah definitely verbally it's gross again another another despicable character that we were supposed to hate just because he is just because um but he's he's dry he's driving uh i'm assuming back to the house uh lisa comes out and is like having a talk with julie about her mom and like how she passed away Right, and this is kind of where you get that lore dump about her being dead for a year and, and, and kind of implying that maybe her dad had more to do with it than they, you know, than the police decided. And that's, you know, they're all kind of somber about it. And and Lisa has to kind of, like, coax Jake to uh, go comfort Julie because she kind of walks off upset. And Jake's like, oh, why, why do I fucking got to go up there and talk to her? And they're like... We're trying to play wingman for you, dude. Like, come on, fucking pay attention to the signs. Because you're her friend? Julie's like, I think my dad may have had something to do with it. And, like, it flashes back to her, and he, like, unrevs a bloody chainsaw. He's like, it was an accident. She fell on top of it. Oops. Oop. <laughs> her, like, her like limbs are festooning the living room. He's like, she she asked for it. She came right at me. She, she owed me. It's like a Robert Durst situation with his fucking neighbor. He says, oh, he, he, you know, I shot him in self-defense. Well, why'd you cut the body up? Well, you know, I had to make it look like it was my only option. It started dancing around the living room, taunting me. And how that dead man danced. <laughs> so, so Julie, like, runs outside or whatever, and Lisa follows after. And then, yeah, we get, the, like Sean said, we get this, like, lore dump. And Julie confesses to her that, like, she found her mom with her face blown off, but the way she says it is so casual. Oh, yeah, I remember kind of absorbing this line going, like, oh, fuck, okay. I just, like, cock my head, like, wait, what? Is this just supposed to be a joke? Like, Yeah, because she's like, yeah, that's when I found my mom with her face missing. And she makes a face. She's like, ha, it's cool. I've already gotten over it. And I'm like, what? She, she goes cross-eyed, and she's like, <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend Tippy. He's a fucking owl with a top hat. But there's this little weird exchange where she's like, oh, well, I was your friend. She's like, yeah, but I didn't ever told anybody that because I only told my friends. And she's like, well, I'm your friend. She's like, well, not you. Yeah, what was that about? I don't know because there's like, this is weird thing where she's like, oh, what am I supposed to do now? Give you a hug? And she's like, how about you kiss me? <laughs> I love you. You're my friend. Uh, I'm just kidding about my mother's death. It's, all, it's a very confusing exchange. I'm not sure what the tone is supposed to be. It's a weird scene with weird dialogue and weird feels because I don't know what the fuck is going on. Now take it away. Oh, man. Okay. So we cut back to, to fucking dad who's drunk on hate brow. <laughs> I love this. I need to make that shirt. But then, like, he, like, his car starts to stall out or some shit. And so he does what everyone in a fucking horror movie does, which is just, like, pull over and just, you know, walk out in front and just immediately nosedive into the engine. And no, it's, it happens, like, immediately, doesn't it? Like, there's no real buildup. Like, I think you see it creep into the bottom of the car. I guess? I don't know. Well, I didn't even know what was going on exactly, because I was like... Yeah, I didn't... Well, first of all, I didn't know this thing had any kind of domain outside of the house. That's what I was just about to say. Like, how far is this reach? Like, 
three miles from the house. Well, you got to consider it already sucked up that other car. So, yeah, right. Like, what's the range on this thing? Right. But that was like right outside the house. This is down the fucking road. I mean, if we think about how many mosquitoes came and attacked that fucking house (laughs) at the end of that movie and the explosion, it's probably a pretty big blast radius before it rebuilt itself. So, uh, you know, I buy it. Okay. So dad, like, yeah, he gets out and he's like climbs almost waist deep into the engine. And then the drain monster, drainiac, whatever the fuck you want to call it, um, like crawls up the bottom of the car and gets him by the face, and in a very confusing series of cuts, uh, he's, like, pulled against the engine block, but then at some points looks like the hood of the car is closed, but it doesn't matter because it melts his face and his throat and everything around his head, but he manages to scream the entire time. Yeah, he gets fucking Raiders of the Lost Ark, man. Yeah, but the whole time he's going, ah! Yeah, the Ark of the Covenant's in his fucking radiator. But at some point, he has no visible tongue, and his all the meat around his throat is gone, and his jaws are just going, <laughs> ah! <I'm> like, <laughs> he just turns into a skeleton in, like, yeah. a second. In, like, a, like a whiff of fog juice, <laughs> and he's a skeleton. Yeah, and but there's still a, a fully formed voice comes out of his little, his little mouth. It's funny as fuck. And again, uh, you know... Body by Jake just fucking rushes out of the woods and just jumps in the air and flapjacks on this bitch and just crushes him under the hood. Don't don't go into your fucking hood of your car around Body by Jake. You, you don't know if he's always gonna be there. Body by Jake. Are you trying to tell me that before thanks that thanks killing um, Home Sweet Home happened that there was a series of of. Uh, hood-related body weight deaths. I mean, it could have been post-Home Sweet Home. We remember how that movie ended. It's kind of left up in the air whether he's actually dead or not, so... It's possible. He had the Power Stone. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. All right. (laughs) (laughs) You just say things and no one's supposed to accept it. Like, oh, okay, yeah, it's it's fucking... It just gets canon. It's just how it happens. That's just the way it is. It's all connected, everybody. So... It's a, this is another one of those deaths where it's like, well, I've been waiting for this fucker to get it, and he gets it in like two seconds, and it doesn't make any sense. And it's yeah. so awkward and funny, uh, like funny looking the way it's filmed. You kinda, it's not as satisfying because it's just so fucking goofy looking. And it happens so quickly. I'm like, okay. And, it, and it's not like excessively gory at all because there's a part coming up that relies on someone seeing his body kind of slung over the front of this hood. Yeah. I guess. Yeah, which which makes his subsequent identification of that man pretty confusing. And then see. Seemingly out of nowhere, Dan Haggerty just fucking teleports next to this fucking van. It's, it's fucking Zap Roundtower from the Final Sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking Gunnar Hansen. Yeah, straight up. He looked like so many different people. Like he walks up and like it's Kenny Rogers. <laughs> As, as we know, and anyone that hasn't listened to the episode yet, again, go check it out. Uh, at the end of Mosquito, Gunnar Henson is coming at this mosquito with a fucking chainsaw in that basement right before the building explodes. So, my theory, just to, you know, let's expand on this theory again, because this is the MDU. There's always room for expansion. Sure. Um, you know, Gunnar Henson, he was blown up by that explosion. There's no fucking bones about it. Uh, but, you know, due to his good deeds and his change of heart, you know, he's like Gandalf the Grey. He was brought back as Gunnar Henson the White, and uh, he uh, goes by the name of Plumber now. <laughs> they gathered the seven Dragon Balls and brought him back. Uh, but, yeah, this, this Gunnar Henson looking fuck, uh, Gunnar Henson Prime, let's call him. <laughs> He, he, he kind of shambles up, and he sees this uh, this fucking skeleton-ass head on this Mo Howard body. Oh, it looks like you're dead there. Okay, whoops, see you later. Okay, bye. Or, or bye. Yeah, I don't, maybe that's the accent that Gunnar Henson's given in his second life. I'm not really sure. He, this guy's, like, Scottish, I think? I don't know what the fuck he is, but he amuses the bejesus out of me, okay? Yeah. He's, he's kind of got, like, the same accent as Santa Claus in The Christmas That Almost Wasn't, where it's just, like, you can't really place it, but it's European. Uh, yeah, it's not, he, he's from one of the isles out there, <laughs> whether it be the Emerald or the fucking the Highlands of Scotland, one of those. Where are you from? Europe. The Upper West Side. All of <laughs> That's that accent, because you can't place it. It's like, what the fuck is that? I'm just like, like all the Bunraku fucking people who are from the Upper West Side. <laughs> That's where they're from, dude. <laughs> We're here for fish. <laughs> the up, the Upper West Side is a continent. <laughs> this plumber character, as he's slowly approaching the house, we kind of go back in, and I guess because the friends have nothing better going on and their car has been engulfed by a swamp, they just start helping clean the house? Uh, yeah. I guess, well, we're not, we got nothing better to do. Not like, let's go call the police or try to walk to a gas station and make a phone call. Like, let's just kind of clean this house that's clearly got something going on around it. Sean, they can't walk miles. 
because this girl <laughs> doesn't want to walk miles. She can't do it. Yeah, who is that? One, one of them does say that. You're right. Tanya. Well, then you leave her for as Draniac bait, okay? I don't know what to tell you people. Well, they, you know, they go in the house. They're helping her clean, and, and Jake has this fucking... Jake's bucket of water starts bubbling like the fucking ooze in Ghostbusters 2. He starts screaming at it? Yeah, he, he gets freaked out by this bubbling water, so he dumps it in this previously dirt-filled tub that's now, I guess, just empty, so I'm not really sure what that implies. Yeah, I don't know. And... Uh, you know, I, I forget who fucking says this shit, but I, I wrote it down because it was hilarious. So they, they get a fucking ring at the door, and they go outside, and this plumber guy's standing there. And they go, what are you, the home improvement guy? And he goes, no, the, the, the plumber. No, he, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he goes, I'm the plumber. And she goes, oh, good, you're the plumber? We got a leak downstairs, and our friend Jake is drowning in it. And he's like, no, 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 not the, I am, I am plumber. Not- well, see, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, pl- I'm the plumber. <laughs> Houses, you got a water elemental in the walls and, and Liam Plum My name is Liam Plummer. Not plumber like plum with the M B but the plum with the M M. So do you have any do you, do you have any whiskey? <laughs> And, the, and they just start saying in unison, prune, 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 plumber? No, prune! Actually, it is plumber. I was just, you know, I was kind of going along with it. I liked the ditty you guys were doing. Um, But yeah, the basement fills up with water um, while this is all happening. And Jake, Yeah, I was like, I wrote down, please kill Jake. <laughs> well, Jake's, okay, this is one of those stupid things. He's like, Jake's drowning and he's like, help, I'm drowning, man. And he's like making like puns. While he's drowning? Yeah. Don't need it. Don't fucking need it. He's Stupid. like, wow, I'm really up to my neck in problems here. Hey. But, like, Leon comes in looking like fucking D.B. Cooper from Without a Paddle. Yeah, he looks like the fucking dad from Boondock Saints, and he's going to throw his fucking jacket open. Billy Connolly shows up, and he's like, yeah. for, thee, Lord, to thee, for thee. <laughs> John Cleese, after he fucking ate Santa Claus, that's what he looks like. But, and like, this, okay, he is essentially, like, He's introduced as the sudden, unexpected hero of the film, but he, like, I don't know, he looks like a fucking pizza delivery driver, um, who also <laughs> looks like he just finished, like, drinking out in the wilderness. The weir- the weirdest thing about all this, on top of him just being who we've already described him to be, this door's locked as this basement's, f- you know, filling up, and no one can get it open. And, and, and this Gunnar Henson fucking Gunnar Henson Prime knocks on the door <laughs> like he, like he, like he's haggard Prime. at the beginning of fucking you know Harry Potter one on the fucking walls to get into Diagon Alley, and and this thing just pops open. Yep, yeah, sure like, does. Like he's got the magic touch. Okay, this is I I took a little issue with the movie from this point going forward, only in terms of like you didn't set that up properly. No, we wasted all that time with fucking Wade instead of making this a priority. Yeah, because then, okay, so they, they he unlocks the door, and they go to the basement, there's no water, Jake's just fine. Like, he's just, there's, he's almost dry, he's like, but he's gotta pee, guys. Oh, yeah, he's fi- he spits out some water, he's like, Ugh. he's like, I gotta pee. And they get upstairs, and Leon, he's not a plumber, his name was Leon Plumber, um, and he's a fucking exorcist. He sure is. He's like, my name's Leon Plummer. I'm the exorcist. I'm here to. I'm here to shoot the blabber. Some blabber bar. You know, water elemental in the wall. The demon here. I'm Leon Plummer. I'm the exorcist. And he's like, that's G U N N A R. Does this guy have a fucking map that he stole from Vivica A. Fox to find this place? Like, where, how does he just show up here randomly? You're given no backstory. He shows up and just tells the audience, like, hey, guess what? This is a ghost movie now. I guess. And he's like, you have a water elemental living in your walls. He's saying it like he's a fucking exterminator, by the way. He's like, yep, you got a bad demon ex- uh, infestation here. Yeah, he, he's like, it's also known as, uh, in the Tobin Spirit Guide, uh, Balawehu. <laughs> Dumbalawehu. He's like writing a quote as he's doing this. He's like, yeah, you got a bad demon infestation. Well, I'll charge you for this, this, this. I can get some extra help up here. Have your job done in two days. Fucking Egon's in the corner raising fingers, and he's writing shit down. This house is haunted. It's gotta be exercised. This house is haunted. It has to be exercised. It's Leon Plummer. You ever hear a poll? Guys, you ever hear a water kill? You ever hear a kelpies or water vampires or whatever the fuck I'm talking about? He just starts rambling off random occult terms. He's like, I got a grimoire and I got to make a pentagram. And uh, have you ever met a witch? This is a good. I, I, I do a pentagram. Get in the floor, lay down. I got a, a good pentagram. <laughs> like, I put put your heads right there. I'm not gonna cut them off. I swear. So he draws a fucking pentagram on the floor to exercise this fucking ghost. And yes, yes, listeners, this movie is suddenly veering a hard left into this. Yeah, and then. Like, all of our protagonists are, like, laying down in this 
pentagram, and he's like, shut the fuck up, we're performing an exorcism. Shut your mouths. And they're like, what? And he goes, a freaking exorcism. Blah, 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 blah. And, he's, and then he's, he asks, like, haven't you ever seen Poltergeist or some shit like that? Yeah, and he even says to him, how long have you been a Ghostbuster? How many references can we fit? Like, we have more references in this show than this movie has, but they're really packing them in yeah, there. Yeah, but, like, see, see what I mean? Like, we were super serious, and now we're just, like, off the walls, bonker schlock shit all of a sudden, you know what I mean? Yeah, and then Prime goes, oh, we gotta wait till midnight, and they're like, okay. He's like, God, oh, can anyone get me a glass of water? And uh, they're, they're just, like, fucking with him, like, yeah, don't get it from the sink, and he's like, cute. Yeah, give me a Coca-Cola TM. They give him a hate brow, he stands up and starts yelling at all of them. <laughs> hate brow. Well, I mean, he does kind of look like Santa Claus. Then there's, like, a time lapse outside, and we see it, like, become midnight. And they've been laying in this fucking pentagram for hours. Yeah. In between, while they're waiting and starting to lay down this pentagram, like, Plummer goes, oh, yeah, does your father drive a blue van? Does he have, like, a Mo Howard haircut? <laughs> does he, uh, wear a... Uh, does he wear a suede jacket from like 20 years ago? Uh, yeah, that's him. Does he Does he drink hate brow? Does, does he have the ability to scream without a face? <laughs> without vocal cords, yeah. It's, without vocal, vocal cords, the song making noise is weird. It's, pretty, it's, it's a pretty good trick there. I, I, I took the beer from his back seat. Uh, by the way, he's dead. Well, see ya. Yeah, I saw him. He's dead in service. Do you care? Okay, moving on. All right, anyway, exorcism. She actually has kind of, I thought, a, a genuine reaction. Like, she's so, like, shocked by this news. Like, clearly this guy, as we've talked about, abused her, you know, definitely verbally, possibly physically. And she just kind of laughs. Like, uh, like she has no other reaction than just to start laughing. She's like, how? <laughs> Tell me in vivid detail. She's sick. She's There's something wrong with her. She's sick. Oh, yeah. I, I just thought that was an interesting response. I, I, you know, the little bit of character that we have in this film, her character is well developed, I guess, uh, out of all the characters. I, I mean, I guess she is kind of the central figure here. And I, I, I thought that was pretty good. She's a bit all over the place. But yeah, I, I do. I do like that response as well. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say, I would argue she's the one who actually feels like a character as opposed to like, I don't know, just a prop. So then uh, Plummer says it's showtime. And like you guys bam, were talking about, bam, they all lay down. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> and that's why I don't do two shows a night, babe. I'll just <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining that coming out of his mouth. Pl- Plumber goes, uh, okay, they're like, oh, what do we do? And, you know, he tells them to lay down. He's like, we need exactly five people for this work. Thank God we got exactly five people. Isn't that handy? It's not like I planned this or anything. I just... Don't touch that, boy. It's a grimoire. And he's like, what's a grimoire? I use candles because that's what occulty uh, type people use. It's, uh, yeah, okay. I'm setting them up at the po- at the corners of the pentagram. You ever see the wolf, man? <laughs> I'm, I'm surprised in the time they're all sitting here waiting, like, no one's set up and went, like, are you full of shit? Hold on. <laughs> Did he go on Jeffrey Donovan's fucking Blair Witch Tour and he came back and thought he was an expert? <laughs> Why are we entertaining any of this? Yeah, like, they're just, he's like, it's a, it's a seance, so you lay there and just behave yourself, and blah, 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 and they're just like, oh, okay, and they lay there for hours as the sun sets. Dad's dead. Dad's dead, yeah, but yeah, your dad's dead, lay in this circle, wait until midnight, what? No, leave, go home, it's over, it's over. Just two fingers to your back, like, everybody get fucked, like, <laughs> yeah. See you. Well, he sets these candles up and he starts chanting and this fucker, he lays down and Prime starts chanting fucking Irish, you know, gibberish under his breath. (laughs) And then all of a sudden, a literal fucking portal to hell, I suppose, just opens up above them. Uh, This is pretty cool. Uh, Okay, this is when the movie slips uh, everyone some LSD. Uh, Because for a movie that languishes in a house for an hour, um... It suddenly just kicks the fucking doors open to like, guess what tricks we know? Yeah, it's like, we saw Evil Dead 1 and 2. And now we're to give them to you both at the same time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's actually done really well. But yeah, it's Sam It's Sam Raimi 101. <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is the scene from Evil Dead 2 where they're... Uh, they're kind of like reacting to different sounds coming from the house, like the yes. the fucking the the pillars the are horses. screaming, and there's you know a car crash and the clock, uh, you know the hor- yeah the sound of the horse. Except you get that and accompanying visuals with all really cool practical effects. Oh man, there is a ton of stop motion stuff going on in here. There's like the one chick's uh uh Tanya. Yeah, Tanya's like bugs. I hope it's not bugs. I hate bugs. And fucking fucking Gunner's like Gunner's like, "Oh, don't say that. You're going to don't tell him what you don't like." Oh no, it just it just popped in there. 
had these stop motion skull spider things come out, and it's so fucking cool. It's like crawling around the fucking walls and shit. All of them have all of them have little emotive faces. They come out like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like this. If there's any reason to watch this movie, it's just for these this last twenty minutes. Oh yeah. Um, and then uh, Jake's is just a, like a floating naked woman who looks like Julie. Is it? Does it look like Julie? It, it's not because it's separate actress. Because I was looking oh, at yeah. the, uh, the the trivia for it, but um, right. Uh, Julie sees her dad. Um, he's all he's all fucking uh, Skeletor. And I mean, like, uh, what's his face from the fucking He Man movie, Skeletor? Like, he looks like he has this very funny skull prop just like attached to his face. Yeah, he's got like a he's got like a skull prosthetic on the side of his face. We don't see what Gunnar Henson sees at first. We'll we'll see it in about a minute. Well, so so we see like imps and and gargoyles and yeah. shit flying out of this. And they're all they're all like practical. A stop motion uh, monsters like oh it looks awesome there's like these spiders like i said with the skull heads and then there's like these flying goblin things and these this fucking worm thing well right the worm thing i think is supposed to you know it is the draniac because it's kind of like the focus of this portal and it's got it's, there's a bit of a transparent a transparency over it so it's kind of like mixed with the background and this this green portal to give like some extra i guess visual context to it like it reminded me of all things of uh, the final segment from Fantasia when Satan is just, like, fucking summoning all kinds of spooky things in the ground. Oh, yeah, kind of, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because you get a lot of those, like, just some flying, like, oogie-boogie things and lots of, like, skeletal creatures and stuff like that. Yeah, again, like, the Evil Dead thing, like, the, it's, like, it's, like, rear projection kind of, like, uh, stuff, or not rear projection, but, like, um, like, composited, like images that are like skewed and like flying around yeah and they're always they're always kind of looking like they're they're you know also through a filter so they're not quite they don't look quite right and they're they're right their right. shapes are all distorted it looks spectral yeah exactly um it's it's uh, it's the ghostbusters thing where you have that thing that just looks completely unfucking natural but seems to fit anyway mm-hmm. right the fucking walls are bleeding and shit uh and it's it's a fucking montage of this like it is like 25 minutes of this well i wouldn't go that far it, it goes on for about a minute or two and then it well i would say i would say in various forms it is roughly 20 ish or like 15 minutes of like just they're like here's our effects budget <laughs> all of it oh well yeah in that sense sure um so this goes on for a little bit and you know gunner henson he finishes his fucking chant and they're like now what he's like Shit. Which usually <laughs> yeah. works by it now. Didn't, it didn't work. Shit. Who's got the whiskey? Uh, shit. I said the wrong words. So literally, as this guy gives up on shit, this the, you finally get to see what Gunnar Henson sees, and the Draniac goes full fucking mosquito again, <laughs> and, and just the proboscis gets him right in the neck, and it just turns him into a fucking skeleton in a second flat. Oh, man. That is not what happens. Oh, is it not? Am I fucking that up? This thing turns into a fucking tire pump and inflates him to fucking 400 pounds. This thing comes down. It's like this giant... Okay. It's like a scald bat worm tentacled thing, and it unfurls this fucking dick and shoves it into fucking his shoves it into his mouth and starts pumping him full of water yeah and he fills up so much he looks like a goddamn uh gunner henson balloon and his fucking his eye pops out and then he explodes all over the room <laughs> it's kind of fucking awesome it's amazingly awesome it's, it's okay it's so good I still like my whole theory on it being a literal mosquito, but now that you mention that, I, I have like a different thought process going on in my mind. Okay, I mean it could be it was it was a demon mosquito, and that was its proboscis. Because now you know I'm thinking like you know you know if, if I'm going with you know my you know head can in here you know I, I've got the the mosquito background on this, but now that you're mentioning that it's literally fucking him in the mouth, I'm just <laughs> thinking you know they really had a lot of sex humor in this. It's this true movie that may have landed or not landed. The previous life that he lived that he died with, he had to be sucked to be killed and now he has to be blown um i mean he's doing the blowing here, Connor, let's be real. <laughs> exactly. you got him there multiple multiple layers to that joke it has to go to the back when you it's like you can't suck blood out of him you have to put stuff into him i mean he is gunner henson the white gunner <laughs> henson prime so he might appear again this is you know this is not at his uh final film i'm sure he's like you can't you can't kill me i'll be back just fucking floats away <laughs> death is but a door time is but a window see ya <laughs> He just looks in the demon in the eyes. This is the 25th time I've been killed by you. <laughs> so now his appearance there is clearly for no reason because he's he's pissed this thing off and just dies. <laughs> <laughs> the way you word it like that, yeah. Oh my god. And these four kids are like laying in this pentagram while this crazy shit is just encircling them. And it kind of adds to my headcanon that he's completely full of shit and just showed up drunk off his ass. 
<laughs> and just and oh, just yeah. happen to be like, you gotta water the mental to you piss it off, get lay on the floor. I'm gonna draw a pentagram. Real quick, I forgot he gives him a card at one point, and the guy's like, what are all, what are all the, you're a PhD, huh? What are all these other uh, letters? He's like, uh, paranormal research and and royal royal par uh, royal paranormal research or some shit. Whatever. Yeah, so it makes me think that he just, like, found this fucking grimoire on the side of the road and then just showed up at the house and was like, I'm going to try to do this. <laughs> well, like I said, he went on one of Jeff Donovan's fucking uh, tours and he thought he knew it all. And, you know, he came to the Mosquito House <laughs> hoping to solve an ancient unsolved crime and uh, he paid for it. He sure did. All the while being the resurrected form of Gunnar Henson, unbeknownst to him. Yeah. So then this, so he's fucking exploded all over the room. I don't know how he didn't get all over everybody else, but he he didn't. Uh, and then the fucking worm thing like starts to go after Tanya, and she like kicks one of the candles that's surrounding the pentagram, also breaking the pentagram. Theoretically, if if we're going by right, mag- yeah, 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 magical ritual standards, this thing has full access to these people now because she's broken the fucking circle like an asshole. Well, I think it kind of does. Let's be real, because this next scene is probably my favorite in the whole movie. Oh yeah, it's so crazy. Yeah, she kicks this fucking candle over and it lights the um the drapery on fire, the drapes or the curtains rather. While while that, while this is all going on, you. you the movie goes from basically this this uh, this spectral invasion to now they're just seeing hell. Yeah, you you basically see walls of faces like built into walls of flesh screaming. This looks like the fucking Freddy Krueger chest in part five. Yeah, but I kind of like this better. I thought it looked awesome personally. I I thought this was so cool. No, yeah. Oh, oh okay. This was my favorite part just because it made me think of like very Hellraiser esque. Uh, Makes makes me think of like that's you know that scene in Berserk if you know what I'm talking about. I never finished Berserk, but I kind of if it, if if my idea of what Berserk is is accurate, then it sounds fucking horrifying. You know what it is if you know what I'm talking about. At least you know early in the series, it's uh, just the definition of the something just beyond your mind. It's very uh, Lovecraftian, I guess I would say. Sure, the the the, the nameless, shapeless thing. Right, something that's so crazy it just drives you insane from seeing it. Yeah, but this is so fucking cool. It's just like this skin wall of these fleshy skull faces screaming Julie's name. But they're kind of like they're they're kind of like um it'd be a weird description, but like they're kind of nipply cuz they're they're like they're they're kind of they're they're like pursed out a little bit and they they yeah, but they also keep going like fucking die. Ah! <laughs> the way the way that they're shot is like super creepy. Yeah. I, it, it's something about them being like hand puppeteered and like the way it's lit and the way it's shot. There, it's it's super effective and really awesome. Um, and then we get to the part of the movie that doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. No, you know, it's so so they can't get up. You know, the, the house is starting to burn down because, like Joe was saying, they they broke the circle, but they didn't actually break it. I guess because they can't get up, they can't stand up for whatever reason. It's like holding them there. Yeah, and then magically, like out of left field, like literally out of left field. Julie's mother's <laughs> spirit, I guess, who's really just like an image with a glow on it and then just like kind of fading in. It's like Casper's mom. Yeah. And uh, it kind of just like has some radiant, uh, you know, rays come down on the demons and they can suddenly stand up. I like, but it's never. Uh, look, I don't need shit spelled out for me, but like, it's so. It's such a light touch. It's not enough. You know what I mean? You know what this made me think of, of all things? Um, this made me think of Insidious. Uh, like, the, like the, the later sequels and everything, too. Because Insidious plants a lot of seeds for, like, heavy emotional payoff when it comes to, like, their fucking ghost rescues. And this is like, look, here comes a ghost rescue. We didn't, we didn't really set this up. So, yay. <laughs> also, it just lacks any dramatic oomph because she shows up and she's like, be gone. Well, that, t- now she doesn't even do that. She just kind of is like, hi, bye, <laughs> and then disappears. <laughs> but like, but like, they make light of it throughout the whole movie. Like, and then, but like, they don't set it up. Right, like like you were saying, for that emotional impact, because like it's always a fucking gag when they're talking about her death. Yeah, and here's my thing: I think that whoever you know, the the creators of this film thought that they set it up because they had all this backstory with oh her mom died and she's not over it, and so to them, you know, I can only imagine they think that that was set up. But to me, it's like okay, well, yeah, there was this part about 
you know, Julie's character that she had this depression from her mother dying, it doesn't make me immediately jump to, oh, her, her spirit's going to save her. Yeah, well, not even that. It's just like, it, I feel like the humor in, in a lot of scenes that shouldn't have humor in it, it it's like misplaced humor. Yeah, no, yeah, I get that too. And it's not solidifying the fact that, like, she's actually mourning this because she's like, I'm over it. He she, You know what I mean? Like, even before she's yeah, like, yeah, she blew yeah. her face off. <laughs> I think another problem is, I think there's so many uh, good examples of this happening, like in this genre of where it's done a lot better. Even 13 Ghosts does this idea better, like right at the end when Tony Shalhoub's wife yeah. shows up and she's one of the 13 Ghosts. Sure, I totally get that. Um, and like I said, Insidious, like on a scale of one to Lin Shea angrily smacking Patrick Wilson dressed in black drag with a ghost lantern, um, it's a one. <laughs> <laughs> So mom shows up, they run out of the house, and then <laughs> it explodes. Yeah, but not before all the vines latch on. That's right. It. Okay, to say this exploded would be giving a. I feel like it'd be a, a underselling it. Like this, yeah, that's right. You're right. I'm this, sorry. This thing has like 14 destructive events happen to it in a matter of seconds. Uh, like like the vines coming. It's the Titanic too, shrunk down into one category. <laughs> <laughs> it's hit by an 843-mile-an-hour wave carrying ghosts. <laughs> oh, there is a movie. Fucking Shane Van Dyke. We can do your job better than you can. You listen to that asylum? Get hip. Ghost wave. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the cool thing about this is, you know, as it's exploding, you actually can kind of see, like, the green uh, light of the, of, of the, the Draniac kind of, like, you know, uh, go up the side of the fucking house like lightning and it kind of forms this like demonic face in it as it kind of shoots into the sky and the house explodes. Almost like the end of Night of the Demons. Yes. Almost like bad taste even, honestly. Um, I was thinking, well, th this kind of ultimately ends the way it reminded me of a poltergeist because that house gets sucked into a fucking portal uh, and this house gets blown to bits Makes a tornado of debris a hole in the ground for Yeah, well, it's more like, it's, it's kind of like the gate, too. Like the, yeah. like, the way that that happens. But uh, these vines come out of the ground and, like, engulf the house. And then pull this thing into oblivion and it, like, explodes. But what was so cool was they did such a great job on the house, I didn't even realize it was a fucking miniature. Oh, yeah, it looks really good. Yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, when it, it gets destroyed, I'm like, oh, that was a fucking sick-ass miniature. Like, that looks great. Well, and I was thinking about that because I was watching. I was like, there's no way this is the actual, like, there's no way this is a, re a representation of the real house because another real house got torn down, late, like, immediately afterwards. Um, so that little miniature was really impressive. Very cool shit. And also, it's, uh, it's also done with all stop-motion effects. It looks fantastic. And then much like... You know, the previously mentioned poltergeist, there is that gigantic hole left behind after everything's said and done. It, like, smashes down, and there's, like, a bunch of water and debris, and then it seemingly just goes down the drain to fucking hell. I love that the it, it maintains the drain motif even in its, like, spiritual destruction. <laughs> yes! I kind of love it. I do. Um, so, yeah, the house, the house is essentially killed. Yeah, and then they fall asleep next to the hole? Like you do. Well, better better sleep now. They're exhausted. They had a very long day, and then they wake up. Yeah, they wake <laughs> they wake up, and like there's a brief exchange, and then it's kind of, it's kind of just over. Yeah, they like go up to the hole, and they're like they're like, wow, that's some shit. Um, well, I guess it's time to go home. And then Julie's like, my life's gonna be different from now on. Everything's gonna be all right. And then just fucking to credits. You know the you know the sad thing is she went home. And, uh, you know, after the funeral of her father, she got all the uh, bills in the mail. And it, it, apparently her father had gone into debt, even with her mother's life insurance oh, money. Oh, no. And, you know, he didn't have a policy taken out on her himself. So I hate to break it to you guys, but she is uh, living on the streets. Oh, yeah. Well, she's in a mental hospital for sure. Man, I thought you were going to go with she killed herself and the cycle of violence continues. Well, you know, Connor, I'm not a, I'm not a total piece of shit. So. <laughs> He might be a bastard, but he's not a fucking bastard. I'm not Wade. Come on, man. And then the Draniac theme song plays over the end credits. Yeah. yeah. Full of uh, spooky dancers, uh, trippy effects, and um, like lots of fisheye stuff. Could care less for this. I, I don't need a fucking naked lady dancing around in a skull mask. Just because. The end credits suddenly become a Rob Zombie music video. Like, it's very bizarre. A shitty Rob Zombie yeah. music video. <laughs> Whatever. Um, sure. And this fucking song... Man. Draniac, Draniac. Uh, sorry. Yeah, I wish it was that. <laughs> but it's like it's like some shitty like reggae song. Yeah, I, I don't know. I listened to it for a few seconds and I was like, that's enough of that. Anyway, so where are we putting this? 
I don't particularly care for this. Uh, and I said earlier in the, before we started, kind of got rolling. It's I, if there was built-in nostalgia for this, because there's some shitty movies I have a lot. Like f- fucking Guyver is not a masterpiece, but I have a lot of uh, emotional attachment to that. Um, so I could see if this, like in Joe's case, where this has some sentimental value, like just loving the fuck out of this. Um, but I was very bored for the first 45 minutes, um, and thankfully the last 20, 30 are pretty exciting. So so, I don't know, it's like a weird limbo place between shelf and dumpster. I'm not really sure where to put it. Um, okay, so I really like this movie for a few reasons. Um, it's definitely a shelf movie for me, for sure. This is probably one of the better examples of micro-budget filmmaking, especially in the 2000s. This was made for like 17 grand, I read. This, this, this is done by people who like know how to utilize their budget and what they're trying to do. And and the effects are so great. And I and they're the really the shining star of this whole thing and really the reason to watch this. I mean, you're not watching this for the acting or anything, but a lot of the filmmaking is pretty good for the most part. But I think the big problem with this movie for me is that there's just a lot of fat and I f- and it feels like there's a lot of scenes that are being dragged out just to fill time. Like they were like, "Oh, we got this awesome scene. We got this awesome idea for this end thing," and then like they tried to build up around that and didn't do such a great job, you know? Or you know, you could cut a lot of the. You can tighten this up, like, and make it a better movie straight up. There's a lot of things in the there. There's a few things that I don't that really don't need to be there as far as storytelling like like the whole thing with wade being like a fucking rapist and shit i don't need like that i don't think that has any place here at all other than that it, it's it's fine it's it's totally fine with me um i've watched this twice and i usually watch the movie once i've watched this twice just because i wanted to watch it again because i hadn't seen it in a while and i really dig it all the stop motion stuff is great um all the gory slimy bits are great i love the reverse photography stuff and again, I got nothing nothing bad to say about any of the effects. If if anything, it's just it's just some of the story beats and the tone is off a few. Uh, it, the tone is off sometimes, but overall, I think it's I think it's totally enjoyable and uh, it's totally on the shelf. Uh, for me, it's definitely a dumpster movie. I I didn't hate this movie. Um, it's definitely no Titanic two, which you know at the end of the day, I must admit I didn't totally hate either. But <laughs> it's definitely better than that. Unfortunately, though, yeah, I, 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 I hate to harp on it because I just, I, it's just the stuff with all the sexual abuse. I get what, what they're trying to do, and you know, when, the, what year did this movie come out, Joe? Two thousand. I mean, it's a little dated at this point. It's not, it's not super old, but like, fuck, it's twenty nineteen. You know, as much as it pains me to say that. Yeah. And you know, this movie's not that old. Like, I, I can't even really give it too much of a hey. Well, they didn't know any better. Card. It's just like kind of just makes me feel gross. Man, I thought it was older. Just like I didn't know when it came out, when I first started looking at it, I was like, "Wow, what is this from early '90s?" And I was like, "2000, holy shit!" You know, to kind of bounce off on of my point about the, my major issue with this film, uh, you know, I did like that aspect of it where it was filmed to look like an old '80s film or early '90s film. Whether that was intentional, I'm assuming it was intentional. Um, I, I appreciated that, and like Joe said, the effects are really cool. Uh, the couple of kills you do get, even the fake kills, you know, are, are, are pretty cool. So, you know, I would say, it you know, it's probably middle of the dumpster for me. You know, it's not down in the bottom of the dumpster with all the moisty, mossy, nasty shit we got down there. It's, you know, middle of the road. It's next to the fucking diaper the Titanic 2 crashed into. It just kind of... <laughs> It's 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 thrown in there like a dirty fucking diaper. It, you know, it, maybe it is the diaper the Titanic ran into. Let's you know get the metamor. Let's let's get the metaphor really uh, speaking to the MDU, if we will. And you know what? Honestly, if if we didn't have this weird, uh, you know, lovingly this weird MDU where I I could picture Gunnar Henson as this plumber character at the end, I may have actually enjoyed this movie less. Uh, so take that how you will. I could see that. Uh, yeah, so de- definitely middle of the dumpster. I suppose I have to say dumpster just because I'm not in love with it. And I feel like if I had to tell someone, like, whether I recommend it to them or not, I wouldn't tell you, like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's totally a movie I'd put on my shelf, but I don't really love it. I totally get that. If you if someone's into this, oh, go fucking nuts. But me, nah, I can go with that. It's kind of a dumpster. But just like a casual, like, pip toss. I don't need to bury it. I don't need, this, I don't need to push it in elbow deep. It's just there. Yeah, it, it hits all the hallmarks for me that, I, that I'm that i looking for in a bad movie. And it's called fucking Drainiac. 
exclamation point. Like, yes, please. It is at least a conversation starter because you can go, you ever seen Draniac? And somebody go, the fuck? Fuck is Draniac? Well, here you go. I mean, if you really think about it, like everything at the bottom of the dumpster, it, it probably has gone through Draniac more or less. You know, it's been flushed down the toilet, <laughs> you know, repackaged, resold. And then, you know, stuck in the bottom of the dumpster. So it's it, it's only fitting that uh, this movie, you know, wherever we may have it land is in the uh, the dumpster. If they took a little bit more time and, like, made the characters more likable and just, like, the overall plot tighter and better, this could be, like, way, way really high. Really good. Yeah, like, way high on my, on my uh, B-movie list. I mean, again, I said I, I love it, and I do, but it's not even close to my top five, like not even maybe top 100 somewhere in there. I mean, you got a bunch of characters that are, are portrayed as unlikable and you know, you know, not that you need to kill people in a movie, especially a horror movie for it to be good. But when you give me a bunch of characters that I want to punch in the face and you don't really, well, I guess they do get punched in the face, yeah. but you don't kill them. Or at least get, you know, do something yeah. besides have them lay on the floor for 20 minutes and just look scared. Uh, you know, that's a problem. There's a lot of little breadcrumbs, but like nothing's ever really followed up on enough to give a shit. Right. No, exactly. And if and, there was a little know... if there was a little bit more weight there, I think overall the film would be better. Oh, I agree. So that's it. That's Draniac exclamation point from 2000 directed by Brett Piper. Hey, everybody. If you want some more bad movie goodness, you can check us out at moviedumpsterpodcast.com. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Android, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, or Podbean. And make sure to leave us a five-star review if you dig the show because it helps us get out of the bottom of the dumpster into more eardrums. Yeah, and if you're on the social medias, you can follow us at Movie Dumpster on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke, exclamation point. I'm Connor McGraw, question mark? Well, if you're not Connor McGraw, who are are you? Oh no. Find out next week on Dragon Ball Z. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. The jig is up! Leon E. Plummer is here! And I will tolerate no more nonsense. I am serving notice here and now that you are no longer welcome on these premises. I'll have no more bursting water pipes, no more wise ass drains, no more mysterious. This isn't quite how I imagine. Swallowing up cards! 